Perhaps I should time the music at one point, like on one day, just to like climax at right the right point. Oh my gosh, that actually did manage to line up directly at 8.30. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the BNDO stream at twitch.tv slash BNDO or YouTube or whatever. I don't care, you know where we are, because if you're walk watching these all back to back, probably going to get tired of that. My name is BNDO. It is the 20th of June, 2022. That is correct. I still did not look up when the solstice was in uh, Sydney. I'm going to look it up right now, because this is very important. This is highly important. That I know when the solstice is. The solstice in Sydney is June 20. Really? Is it actually now? This is just like a oh, it's roughly happening. Come on. When is it? In Sydney, the Tuesday. Okay, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. We're all good. Um, I hope you're all uh, staying home, rugged up, or not staying home and not rugged up because it is hot outside in the other side of the hemisphere. Very hot, actually. People were commenting on that in like England. They were just like, bro, it's like scorching. So, how about let's just jump right into it because you guys probably know exactly what we're on today. That is correct. More Super Mario Galaxy 2. The Green Star Challenge is still on because it's, it's never off. Uh, but yeah, in the last stream, uh, I got 41 green stars, and, uh, in this stream, I'm gonna hopefully get 41 more. Maybe a few more than that. Um, let's dump the, the star bits to the male toad. To the male toad? The other toad. Um, because it's not like I'm gonna spend them. Oh, he added four more to the total. Now he has four. Well, he's gonna be very surprised, because I guess that many stars later, I've picked up a metric butt ton more. I have still forgotten the 9999 bonus, and I'm just gonna ignore it. But, yeah, uh, pretty much just a continuing on. We're getting the gold crowns, basically, that's the goal. So, I've done these two galaxies, let's move on to the two next to it. We've got the Haunty Hall Halls galaxy. I think I started a stream on the Haunty Hall Halls, I can't even speak, galaxy, but yeah. But yeah, no, this past week has been, uh, rather chilly. Uh, not too, not too chilly, but just a little chilly. Um, I think it was like 19. I wonder where the green star is. Um, yeah, I think it was like 19 on Saturday, or on, no, Thursday, and now it's just like one degree cooler every single day. Until now, it's been a little bit rainy. Not too rainy, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, tomorrow is the shortest, oh, there's another green star. Underneath? Oh boy, that's a fun position. That's a fun. Oops, I <laughs> span. I span. That's the past tense of fun. Oops. Maybe I shouldn't kill myself. What do I need? Lives? Don't need them. Alright, maybe I will. It's taking its time. Alright. This should be easy enough to get. Oh. I was not as easy enough to get. I've been tricked. The worst part is that, like, it's there, you can see it, but you can't feel it. It's intangible. Just like the video game announcements that continued happening, and I have still not watched all of them. I remember- Oh, I did it twice. I did it twice. Um, I think I remember the Starfield, the Xbox announcements and stuff coming out, like, just the day before I streamed last week. And, uh, I've still yet to watch that, but I watched a few more. And I, I've got notes for them. I don't think I've got as many notes because I've got an actual topic that I can talk about. Um... Oh, 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 I think my hat touched that one. Sure. I'll accept it, because i got to, you know, go through. I have 120 minutes, roughly, to do the stream, and I've got to get 40-something stars. So that's three minutes a star. Uh, which, granted, I gave myself a little bit of time at the beginning, and honestly, I give myself a fair bit of time all the time. But... Yeah, nah. Uh, yeah, I watched a bunch of stuff. Uh, some of the, how would I how would I characterize it? It ranged from like uh, 
that was my feeling. Uh, range from that to... Uh, uh, it's pretty okay. Um, so yeah, I, I assume that's the green star. The, the number two. If it's at the end, then... Oh. At least I can, again, blitz through the levels. Some of these green stars, you just gotta, you know, do a lot of the level again, and some of them you don't. Oops. Alright, gotta, gotta get back into the spirit of things, but there it is. I think you actually have to triple jump for it. Oh, and it's up there. Cool. Alright, here we go. One, two, oh. Nah. Oh boy. Ah. Oh. That one's... Uh, I'm gonna legitimately game over at some point, aren't I? Oh, there wasn't even a checkpoint! Oh. How about let me briefly glance on checkpoints. I played in this past week uh, the game 13. Not the remake one that came out two years ago, but the original. The original 13. Um... <laughs> I, I was reminded by the lack of checkpoints, because that's a first-person shooter where you had to not have checkpoints, basically. Oh boy. Is there a way to get back? Okay. Alright, the platform wasn't too weird. Alright. Okay, the, the theory is there. The practicality is... Still there. I can't just backflip it. Okay. I feel I feel like an idiot now. I've been attempting to get it with the triple jump. That's okay. But yeah, no. Play the game 13. Um, for those who don't know, it is a first-person shooter developed by Ubisoft Paris. I believe they are the specific studio that were making the Splinter Cell games way back when. And uh, here's just a first-person shooter. It's based on a... I'm going to say Belgian comic book. Uh, I might have got the nationality wrong, but it's based on a comic book, and a kind of obscure one. Um, and uh, you basically play as a spy guy, you play as number 13 himself, uh, and uh, there's a conspiracy basically, you know, they murdered the president at the beginning, there's a conspiracy to take over the government, um, and you're basically, you know, trying to piece it together, but also it's like, you know, why are you number 13? Who are you? You try and find that out as you go through the game. Um, well, at least, at least the campaign kind of, you know, lays it out for you. That's okay. Um, it's a first-person shooter. Uh, it's got a unique comic book style in the sense that uh, everything's cel-shaded. There's onomatopoeia words appearing when you, you know, make explosions or enemies are, you know, tapping the ground. Um, there's a lot of that, which is kind of neat. I even like, uh, you know, the comic book panels showing up when, you know, you hit an enemy from a distance and, uh, and, uh, you know, he falls off a ledge. It's like, that's kind of cool. Um, the weapons are pretty, you know, as they come, it's like, here's a pistol, here's a revolver, here's a shotgun, here's a double barrel shotgun, here's a assault rifle, here's a submachine gun, here's a, yeah, like, the, uh, there's a bit of that, um, but they generally work. Uh, I didn't really like the assault rifle one though. I found that the accuracy was just horrendous on it. And uh, that's... Given that there's weapons that fire way better, I'm just amazed that like, you know, you get given it so often. Uh, no idea what the green star is just yet. I'm... Oh boy. Oh boy, I'm at zero. I am going to, I am actually going to do it. We're gonna just game over immediately. I knew it would happen like this though, where you like put down the game, you've lost all your lives, and then you've come back to the default number of lives and you're playing sloppy. But given that like, you know, I started back earlier and I'm not doing anything too silly. Oh, that's a green star. Running past the Mata Munches. Oh, I guess this is going to be the challenge. Oh boy. Not he's a, he's a goner. I can't, I cannot go back. I'm, I'm, I'm a goner. I'm a goner. You joined early, and you joined at just the right point to see what a game over looks like.
What happens when you game over, by the way? You get just taken out of the level. And then they tell you to take a break. It's not too bad. Um, but it does mean I've got to walk through. There wasn't really much level there, was there? It does mean you got to navigate back to the level menu. Oh, but... Yeah, nah. Uh, yeah, so th this stream's going to be just... Uh, you know this? I'm talking about 13. Uh, 13, yeah, first person shooter. Um, the other thing as well is that it came out of that awkward time where um, Call of Duty, like modern warfare um, style regenerating health was not a thing yet. So you still had the health armor system. I'm not saying the health armor system doesn't work, but in particular, um, there's a lot of, like, you know, a lot of hit scanning enemies in this game. Um, Actually, pretty much everything is hit scanning unless they fire a rocket at you. Um, so, uh, your alleviation is that you get armor and helmet as well, and uh, you pick up health packs, and you can use the health packs at later points in time. You don't expend them now, you expend them later. I think that works out okay, um, but it does mean that there's some times when you just take silly amounts of damage because enemies just decided to deal silly amounts of damage and sometimes where you don't take damage and you kind of breeze through a bit and you're like okay um so i'm not 100 percent confident on the consistency of the difficulty i just played on normal as well and yet like i still kind of felt it at times um but i generally say the pacing works best on normal maybe it's something you know maybe i need to actually play on hard but Sometimes I feel like I, like, I want to, like, feel like I'm good at games, and then it's just like, I'll play some other game, you know, the first time I played it, so no shame in really playing on a easier difficulty. But, like, there's some games that I can, you know, absolutely breeze on the harder difficulties, and then there's some on the easier that I just can't. Um, okay, take two, I gotta nail the backflip, because I don't... I, yeah, it, it wasn't like too far out of reach, it was just the fact that I keep going for triple jumps. So, ah, okay. Well, I am still mildly behind the one star every three minutes thing, but at least there's that spooky dookie galaxy done. 165, that is a prime number, did you know? I know, right? News to me as well. Um... Alright, let's go, let's go right, let's do this one. The Beat Block Galaxy. This one's gonna be easy enough to find the stars, cause what else is there to the level? There's not really much. Oh guys, watch out, there's a prankster comment, so. Uh, but yeah. Um, the other thing with 13 is that it's got some boss fights. Uh, they start off pretty okay. One's against a, um, the first one's against like a evil scientist guy, so he tries to stab you with a syringe. Um, it's not too tricky because you can kind of keep a bit of distance but he does take a lot of damage but later on in the game some of the bosses start using like uh, the light machine gun weapon and it's just like he just rails into you and the only way I beat him was by just constantly repeating until my dumb luck blind fire spray ended up dealing enough damage and defeating him I cannot tell you how I beat some of these bosses I'm hearing it. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, Hattie. Oh boy. Okay, I'm glad I got that first go, but... <laughs> oh boy, that was a... That's an angle. The other one's just back there. I guess it's not that long of a level, is it? So... Uh... But yeah, um... But other than ripping on the game... Oh, if I have to rip on... <laughs> Uh, greetings Blob, how's it going? Sonic 06 level bad? It kinda is like a Sonic 06 level, isn't it? I've not played Sonic 06. I remember Sonic 06 has, like, the worst part about some of the levels in Sonic 06 was how repetitive and how long everything is. Uh, if going well is in you're going well or I'm going well. I guess we're both going well in that case. We're going, we're going pretty well. I'm, I'm on a, I'm a, on a good run so far. Uh, I'm at four stars, so I'm a little, a little bit behind when it comes to the stream, but it's not like, it's not like this is going to be a, a two and a half hour stream, it's looking pretty okay for now. And I can always catch up as well, so it's all good. Um, 
As long as I don't, like, constantly die. Which galaxy did you- I did the, uh, Spooky Dookie. I forgot the name of the galaxy. What was it? Haunted Hall Halls? I did die a couple of times on that one. Um, did not game over though. It didn't happen. Nope. Uh, no sorry. Uh, I'm just, uh, chatting about 13, a game I played this week. Um, if there's one thing I did really like about 13, it's, um, the amount of environments you went to in the story was pretty nice. There was, uh, 32 levels, and while some of them are, well, a lot of them are kind of short, uh, the Yoshi Light Fruit, I think it was the Yoshi Light Fruit level, yeah. There was a green star on both of the stars there. Okay, so it's just directly above me here, like... Ooh, but it's a little bit too high, so I'm gonna... Hmm. I want, I want to get this Goomba out of the way. Or just go for it. <laughs> that works too. I've still got my Silver Stars. Oh, there they go. <laughs> Very important. Um... But yeah, no, the environments in, in 13 are pretty neat. I really like how the game starts off with, um, like, the sunset, um, on a, on a beach dock. Uh, so you're on, like, a little boardwalk, going between some little, you know, canyon cliffs. You got the sunset, it's nice and orange, so it's not, like, too dark, but, you know, there's lights on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like, because the whole game's cell shaded, it's a really nice, like, artistic look. Um... If I had to rip into one other thing technically about the game, uh, none of the, like, comic book panel effects or really the shader effects that come up when, like, you're dazed at the beginning, you do a flashback, all of those effects, um, they don't scale in resolution. They're all kind of, like, rendering to a 640 by 480 texture, and then it's just stretched across the screen. So while, like, yeah, it doesn't break the aspect ratio of what you're looking at, it's like... It just goes all, um, I'm talking about a 13. You can get it on Steam for, like, eight and a half bucks. It's pretty, pretty cheap. Eight and a half Australian, but I might do as well. Um, it's, a uh, for, I, I feel like it's slightly noteworthy because it's a first-person shooter by Ubisoft. It is a nostalgic ratio. Okay, I gotta listen out for where the star is. Hold up. You know that game? Oh. I- I feel like I, like, I completely didn't know about it at all. I only know about it because, um, the G-Man Lives video on it. Um, it's like a really old one of his. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was just like, oh, I'll just pick it up at some point. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the game, yeah. I don't think I hear anything, so I'm gonna destroy the Bowser thing and continue on. Um, yeah, it, it is on Steam, yes. You can also get it on Good Old Games, uh, but I got the Steam one, which I think is basically the Good Old Games version. I don't think there's anything about it. Um, I ran it with a fan unofficial patch, um, which basically set the resolution to the right... Well, actually, it didn't set the resolution to the right thing. I still did a config tweak on it. Um, but it set the... Um, the aspect ratio to the right thing, which is nice. Um, and the game's on, on the Unreal 2. Oh! Oh! Uh, it might, I'm not too sure if it does. Like, as much as I like GOG, like, it doesn't always get fan patches. At least I can get, like, star number two. I wonder if that was star number two, in which case, oh. Am I still hearing the star as well, like, up here? I think I am. Yeah, it's... I don't know if I am. I think I am still hearing it here. Uh, if it was star number three, that'd be terrifying that star number three is all the way over there, but... Let's break all these. Oh, I'm hearing the Comet Metal. I'm hearing the Comet Metal, can't believe it. Alright, uh, that looks like a star over there. Do we just go for it, or? no, nah, it's a bit far. I think you can go for this. Oops. 
So this will be a good indicator if this is number two. Yeah, let's not get that. Man, that's a spot. I guess you might want to get the snowball over there. Off I go into space. All right, we're getting the snowball this time. Oops. Oops. That's probably three. Well, I mean, sometimes three is on the second star as well. Go, oh, my snowball. Live. Live. Okay, build it up, build it up, build it up. Okay, there are now three of them. Really? Really? Okay. Uh, go down. There you go. I am I am in the cold. Main star the main star here is is in the snow bowser, yeah. But this is star like main star number one, so who knows? Well, we'll know in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. So star number three would be somewhere else, and star number one is on that slope, and I've got to now nail the slope. But that's okay. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, I... Was there anything else about 13? So I really like the environments. I like the feel of some of the weapons. Um, the... The um, grappling hook you get gets used quite a fair bit. I really like it. I also like how it gets some optional uses as well. So just to find goodies, uh, that's kind of neat. Um, the art style looks great. The comic sound effects, yeah, the comic sound effects is great. Um, the music is great. The music is so good. So definitely gets a big plus um, for that one. Uh, the voice acting doesn't really click it with me, but. I'm... it's campy. I'll just... I'll accept that. I'm not really too fussed about, like, voice acting. Um, I'm gonna wait until the fire flower is gone so I can do a spin. Or I can just do a jump. But be on the roof. Oh. Psh, okay. It was just on the roof. Um... Yeah, the... yeah, and the whole comic book look, like, you know, they applied it to everything. And I really admire it for that. Um, I think the level design works at the first half of the game, and then I'm, I don't know, it kind of drops off a little bit near the end. And I get so, I do get so tired of the stealth sections. The, the stealth sections are, like, they're annoying at times, and kind of like, oh, okay, at, like, other times. But, like, the submarine part. Uh, the second level when you have to escape the police, you get the ability to hear enemies by tap, tap, tap. Yeah, yeah, being able to, like, hear the enemies like that, or rather see the, the footsteps like that, it's subtle, but it works. It works nicely. Um, yeah. Yeah, the submarine level I could do without, um, for reference with the submarine level. It's a stealth section. A lot of the stealth sections in the game, like, you don't get told off when you get seen, but you get told off when they, you get seen and someone then hits a button. Um, the, the level in question has these walkways, like, that go above you, and they're like, uh, you know, mesh grating, they can see below it, um, and they'll just like spot you through that, and then they'll hit the button up on the ledge that they're on. You cannot shoot them through the floor, which means, while you're not aware of where these enemies even are, you're just expected to, you know, kind of awkwardly time your runs to go past them. I gotta get the star chips here. They're pretty nice, they don't, um, don't remember much of the later parts of the game. First three levels. Yeah, the first three levels are pretty good. Um, I really like the, uh... What is it, the canyon level? The canyon level's pretty cool, too. Um... The, uh... There were also some, some neat ones, uh... Let's see, there, there was the, uh, the sanctuary. There was some kind of neat stuff going on there. Although I could do without the um, the one little bit where uh, in the sanctuary you had to find the Tetris piece in the in the fake wall block. There was virtually nothing telling you that there was a fake wall block that you had to interact with. You just had to go for it. Um, 
and that was kind of silly, but yeah, I think everything that like I didn't like, it was in either in isolation or it was ah playing at a friend's place. I swear, I've probably bought so many games because I played them at a friend's place. It takes a bit of time. It took me seven hours, so it was a bit of a bit of a lengthy game. All right, well the green star's there. Is it just down here? Oh, it is. Oh no, it is down there. Yeah. That's kind of weird. It's like you can see that coming. Um, especially some of my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I um, I I still have an infamous story. Um, and I think my cousin probably like leaked it like a decade ago. But I I remember um, my cousin had a, a copy of Super Mario 64 DS, and I was oddly, like, I was not the biggest Nintendo guy way back then. I had a, you know, I had the Wii, I played Mario Galaxy, but like, I never, oh, well, this would have been 2006 actually, so I don't think I had Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah, I don't really think I'd played too much Nintendo stuff back then. I had Nintendo systems, but I never played like Mario games, really. Um, and uh, yeah, he had Mario 64 DS, and I was like, wow, that's amazing, and then I like stole his cartridge. Like, I, I was just like, I hid in my pocket like left and then he got very sad because he didn't know where it went and then my mom like immediately picked up on the fact um and then chastised the heck out of me i was an absolute demon as a kid you would have hated me if, if you had to raise me my mom's got so much persistence perseverance good honor um but yeah no so i gave it back and then i all just wrote myself in. which yeah also i think i jerkishly deleted like one of the saves so i could start from the beginning yeah, I was a monster. So what did I do uh, in response? Well, I think I got Mario Galaxy, basically. Although I, uh, uh, Rome Total War said my pirates later with the Monster Hunter series to try. I feel like I don't see as many like recommendations uh, from friends anymore. I get a lot of, I do a lot of recommendations. <laughs> It's Mario 64, man. If you, if, like, well, I, it is a lengthy-ish game, but it's not like it wasn't the, the save with all the stars gotten as well. They still had that like on hand. I'm just seeing if there's a green star somewhere around here. I don't think there is. So, um, but no, they still had a 150 star save on that um, cartridge. I just didn't have a. I just deleted the one with 50. Uh, no biggie. It was like 50 or 70, it was, it was like some middle number. Hey, Wix, are you playing? Uh, yes, this is week 8. I imagine there's one more stream of playing this game afterwards. Oh, they... I hear it. I don't see it. Um, the ability to check the gameplay through streams and videos changed a bit. But also, don't forget you're an adult now. Yeah. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh no, it's gone. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I should. I. Oh. I was hearing on my left. At least it's not that far from the checkpoint, really. Um. Yeah, yeah. I I mentioned Triple G. Um. And I'm just like, I'm like, very acquaintance with him. Like, I think we've spoken together like a couple of times, not too many times. Um. Back when he had a Discord, like. I, I said a few things, and I still have him on my Steam friends list, so I can still send him a message. He's nice enough to have not gotten, gotten rid of me, so I, I appreciate that. Um, but I don't send too much stuff, because I don't know, man. He, I feel like, oh, he's, he's, he's a bit famous now, and I don't know if I should be messaging him. But he, he's a guy I really like. I really respect his opinions. He makes great videos. He... Um, you know, he, he says it like it is, and he really connects with the things that I like, which I think is very important in a reviewer. It's not necessarily like, and this is a, this one's a weird one. It's like, yeah, I do want like people to be very objective, and yeah, actually, I do want people to be very objective. We'll just go with that. Um, 
But, like, I really, like, I want someone who thinks exactly like me. I don't really want differing opinions when it comes to a, re a review. Unless, you know, I'm incredibly confused and maybe I don't understand a game and I would like to see it in better light. Or maybe I want to understand how other people perceive games. But when I want to, like, you know, a recommendation guide, the best thing to do is to find someone who does indeed just, you know, think like you. Age of Empires, Story of the Friends Place. I think I did see Age of Empires at the Friends Place. I saw Civ. I remember playing um, Civ 5 at a friend's birthday party. They brought the laptop and they were just like, here's Civ 5. And I was like, oh crap, that's actually pretty neat. And then I bought it and oh my gosh, I've now wasted a year of my life or something. Fun fact, I've still not played Civ 6. Or Beyond Earth, actually. I think I played Beyond Earth for like a, a, a hot minute. The Civ 5, I, I don't know, man. I've got like 100 or so hours in that. Which is probably not too much time, now I think about it. But like, I, I, I have played a lot of... Maybe it's like 200. 200 is a lot for me. It's, it's weird, because like, I've played Endless Legend a handful of times, which is a... Um, it's a 4X game, I'm not too sure if it's a Civ clone, but... You can imagine it's a lot like Civ. A lot of people really like Endless Space. I haven't played Endless Space too much. I couldn't get used to, like, building, um, like, custom units. I'm hearing the metal. But I'm not seeing the green star yet. Yeah, Endless Legend kind of clicked with me. It's got some performance quirks. Oh, there's the green star. Oh boy, that's a green star location. Is that- that's right on the corner? That's right on the corner. You do it before or after you get the change up. Probably after you get it. I love the texture on this change up. I don't think I noted it last time. Yeah, I don't know, there's a lot of, like, neat games. And it's like, I think the best way to really know about them is to have a reliable you know, recommendation system. It's one thing to have, you know, like, stuff like Amazon and Steam and all this stuff recommend you games, but, like, you know, a computer... Well, I guess a computer algorithm can go all the way, you know? It can be perfect. Uh, you'll be AFK for a few minutes now? Alright. Um, yeah. It can be perfect, but I don't know if, uh... Yeah, ha friends and stuff, it always seems to work out pretty decently, so... I think that is all but the Bowser galaxy now. It's weird, it's... Well, I guess I was already like six stars down in this galaxy, or in this world, so... Two green stars in the Bowser Jr. level. Reviewers that target niche indie tiles. They don't have to be niche indie tiles, but I feel like, yeah, just someone who plays a lot of games that you are interested in. I really appreciated people like Total Biscuit, but oh boy, I cannot, like for the life of me, understand, well, I can't get into, like, RTS games too much. I'm a bit too small brain like that, but, um... But I really respected his opinion whenever it was, um... Any other... My kind of game. So... Yeah, how many stars am I? Oh, yeah, I'm at 11 stars, jeez. Yeah, total, total Biscuit, you know. He left behind a really nice legacy. Uh, especially, uh... I really, um, you know, I, I I feel like that's a that's a weird one. It's like people who, you know, are no longer with us. There's a lot of people on the internet now like that because, I mean, you know, like a lot of people are probably like, oh, I follow these YouTubers. And then it's like, you know, YouTube is a 17-year-old website. A lot of uh, people have, you know, unfortunately passed since the inception of the website. A lot of people have, uh, you know, been introduced because of the website since. So... Oh! Is Yoshi a goner? Yoshi might be a goner. Oh, and I might be- Oh! I might be a goner in a moment. No, he hit the switch! What are you doing? The platform's already left without you. Oh. i give you a new one. I think these might give you a point. There you go. I'm hearing the green star. I'm about to, I'm about to jinx myself in a moment. 
I did. I shot the ground twice. I shot the ground twice. Cannot believe it. Alright, this game isn't perfect. This game is actually, like, that is something that it's got to me, like, a handful of times now. Where I'm just, like, I'm shooting the ground. Is it something... I don't remember it ever happening, like, when I originally played the game. So I'm thinking, is it an, like, something that was fixed in the European version? That might be an interesting one. You ever have that? Like, when, the, you know, there's different versions of games all over the place, but, like, in particular, the European versions would often be, like, like, bizarrely bug-fixed versions. I mean, yeah, like, there's a lot of, like, Japanese games, or Japanese versions that, you know, have the bugs, and then they're fixed in European version. Oh. What was that? It jinxed me on the whole three minutes per star thing. And the worst part... That's star number one, I gotta do this again for the second star. Yep, that was exactly where I was aiming. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I guess the idea of like talking about like, you know, uh, passing to people, like, I don't know, maybe this one's a bit of a bit of a not take, but it's like, I sometimes, like, can't reason with it, like, as in, not, not like I can't understand it happening, but like, you know, you don't know, like, how to feel about it, and like, different people, like, you know, respond differently when they have no idea how to feel, and I'm just like, I literally, like, blank out, like, it's not like, you know, out of disrespect or anything, it's purely, like, I don't know whether, oh, the star's there! Well, good thing I died then, I would have missed that. That was a cheeky spot. I was hearing it, it was really loud there, but yeah. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I don't know, I don't know. Different people react differently, but yeah, I just feel very odd because I just have no idea how to really respond. Maybe, maybe, maybe you know, there'll be a time. And uh, yeah. That's a very personal and, uh, possibly a downer statement, but, you know, you, you make, you make fly. You learn, you get through things, and you become a better person usually on the other side, so. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> I forgot to just finish up on the 13 talk. Um, yeah, overall it was okay. I didn't think it was, like, absolutely amazing. But I did really like the soundtrack and presentation, and I think that, you know, it definitely gets merit because of that. I also really appreciate it is actually cheap on Steam. Like, they do charge $8.50 Australian, I assume it's 5 US. Like, I appreciate the fact that it's so bargain, you know, priced. That's really nice. And then, of course, it goes, like, half price. It might even go further than half price. Um, it's honestly not too shabby of a, of a thing. And it's got bot support, apparently. Because I, I guess it's Unreal 2. I didn't play any of the multiplayer, but that's a nice like to have. Just for any game at the time, so. Oh. He, he ducked. He moved. There we go. Uh. Wait, oh. Surprised I already shot the thing. But sure. <laughs> the, the glass right here. Um, so, I, speaking of 13, 13, I, I even mentioned it, has a 2020 remake. And that got me thinking like, there's a lot of odd remakes and remasters and reimaginings of like a lot of these games. Um, and you're especially seeing quite a bunch in this recent. <laughs> Um, you're especially seeing a bunch of these at the E3, not E3. Um, I was talking to some mates about uh, the the, um, the Dead Space remaster slash remake, and I'm like, Dead Space is not like too old a game. I don't know if it really needs a remake. It just needs like, not even. Some people would say like a coat of paint. I'm like, I don't know, man. Games like came out in 2009 literally just need to run nicely at a higher resolution. They don't need to like. I don't need anything more than... Yeah. 
I don't think this ship's going anywhere because the star's right there, but. I can't exactly angle the camera to walk up this mast particularly any e easier. Ah, RTX on. Oh, yeah, true. R RTX improvements are nice. But I feel like you should do an RTX version of the game and not just, you know, Dead Space. Like, what is it? Is it actually Dead Space, like, remastered, re-image, like something like that? I had a genius idea. Like, uh, so one of my mates said um, that the reason why they do these is mostly to gauge interest for future titles. And I'm like, that's a fair, like, call. But I have a genius idea on how to gauge interest in an accurate way. Because the problem with a remaster is you'll have people like me who go, I don't need a remaster. The game runs fine on my computer. I guess on, on consoles you probably need it. Um, but, or well, even then, not all consoles. Lion King live action. Oh, I guess that that's, a, that's an attempt. He actually, like, the moment I stop walking, Luigi actually, like, starts sliding. Hold on. Like, legit, I'll start from here. And I'll start walking right. And he's fine for a moment. Hold on. Uh, but yeah, no, Lion King live action is a, is a, a really interesting one as well, because uh, there's, a, there's a number, there's a fair bit of that film that they did take lines out of the original. Uh, particularly because Mufasa is voiced by the same guy. But also, it's like, yeah, the script is... A lot the same, the, um, the shot for shot is sometimes a lot the same. It's like, it's a remake that I don't know if it necessarily needs to happen. It's, I guess, you know, they've done it for a lot of their other properties. When will they do it for the Hunchback? You know, that, that's the one that I'm waiting on. Uh, so that is indeed World 3 done. Oh, no, it's, when I hit the top right of the screen. That is World 3 done. There's a gr cold crown there, so... Let's continue on. I should be able to get all of World 4 um, in an hour. And then uh, we'll do a bit of World 5. Because I got to do World 7 as well. Don't forget, there's 7 worlds. Um, but yeah, no, the Lion King's one. Um, but now, okay, so if you're doing this to gauge interest, I have a genius idea on how you can gauge interest for a new title without spending so much that you actually did just make a new title. Are you ready? Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Make a short, like, 15 US dollar experience, so a quarter of the price of a game, that's a new game, like, in the world. It doesn't have to be a crazy long game, it just has to be a game. Let people play it, and figure it out. Go from there. You have one, got people paying money for, you know, for something. You are gauging interest in something new. You often can do it without really requiring people to like play the previous ones, like especially if it's fifteen dollars. A lot of people are very willing. You know, Far Cry Three Blood Dragon. People play that without even playing Far Cry Three. I played that before I played Far Cry Three. I think. Was it under this one? I just I saw it. Oh, uh, I'm gonna like back out. I think I see the particle effects there, but I've got no clue. Oh boy, that is a spot. That is a spot and a half. Oh, <laughs> I should have hit the checkpoint that's after the the thing. Oh. So, oh, that's a cheeky spot. That's a cheeky spot. But yeah, no, legit. Every game publisher, if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do a remaster purely to gauge interest, don't. Also, that's star number two, I just noticed. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, I don't think people, like, 100% object to there being a, you know, a Dead Space remaster, but if you say a game... Okay, if you say... I, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna shut up to try and get this jump. Ugh, I gotta get that momentum a bit more. Um, but yeah, like, I, I feel like sometimes these are doomed to fail. They do these remasters purely because some investor really didn't call it right. Like, that's it. That's purely it. And I'm just like, no, just go simple. Just make a small game. You don't even need to push the engine to crazy amounts. You just need to literally make a new gameplay experience. Literally pull a Half-Life 2 Episode 1 slash 2. Literally just that length and 
so many people will play it. You, do, you don't have to... It, it's weird, it's like, it feels so obvious to me. I can't think of any, like, counter reasons other than you literally have no ideas for a new game. But like, yeah, if you want to, do a, do a short experience and then make a full game and bundle in the short experience. I think that was, um, you remember, um, Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes? I feel like the full game was already a thing by then, but, um, you know, like it was well into development. But granted, that short playable demo, um, which unfortunately was horrendously priced at the time, so I, I will acknowledge that. But, you know, if it was priced okay, no one would have minded. Like, yeah, people would call it a demo, but it's like, yeah, if you charge not much for, like, Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, which was just like, it was one level. Do you think I could jump to it from here? I'm gonna take a stab. Oh my gosh, you can! Woo. Um, but yeah, if anyone remembers Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, it was a, uh, a one-level demo. They had one main level, it was now long, and then they had like six, like, alternative missions on top of this exact same level. Um, but it used the mechanics of the full game to some degree. There's a lot more to the main, to the full game. Uh, which I've still yet to play, by the way, so... Um, grain of salt on that one. Uh, but... Uh, I would say Ground Zeroes was a really nice way to just gauge interest. A lot of people really did like Ground Zeroes, except for when you had to pay for it. <laughs> they really hated the price. So just price it accordingly. Don't charge too much. Because I think a lot of, as well, like... If you have a $15 game that you spent, or rather, if you have a game that's the quarter of the budget and a quarter of the price, you should expect to get the same amount of return, like, proportion. But because it's a cheaper price game, you're naturally going to have more people buy it, I feel. I, I, like, I feel like more people will buy the cheaper game, even if it is only, like, a, a lower price. Sorry, how do I phrase it? Um, like, I feel like people aren't averted to cheap games, they're averted to cheap feeling games. And a lot of, a lot of indie games around that price point are, um, you know, not particularly amazing. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, hello back! Oh, you heard me the entire time. You, you heard me. You heard me rambling about, um, $15 games. Uh, or 13. Or, uh, bad things. I think that was a... I made a comment about bad things, but it, uh... Did everything. Oh! That turtle is the Angeti! I'm gonna... Just... Okay, I think I just got a triple jump for this. One, two, three... There you go. <laughs> Not too bad. Look at all those upside down forms. It's kind of weird having the star. Like, these these green stars are in strange spots. And so you always get like weird backdrops when you pick up everything. It's like the silver stars one. It's like, the silver star was in the way purely because there's no other stars that you get where you have silver stars at the time. Because you'd be getting that one specific star. Maybe there's another star like later on or elsewhere where like, you can get some of the silver stars and then duck off to a hungry luma. Maybe that's like something you could do. You know what this feels like? This feels like um Nintendo nowadays would do post-launch DLC and maybe they'd charge for it. This is like Super Luigi U, you know, where they charged not full price for um a rather like substantial amount of content, but it did just reuse a lot of Super Mario, um, New Super Mario Bros. U. I got the same kind of vibe out of this, the the Green Star Hunt, where it's like, yeah, I mean, like it really isn't much effort to stick all the Green Stars in, but it's kind of neat. Wow, that that's both Green Stars, and also it's directly underneath me, so I will now wait. Or I could hop off Yoshi. That works too. <laughs> Man, these two star galaxies are pretty quick to get the green stars, aren't they? It's just right there. There you go. But, you know, I, I have the genius idea, you know, Nintendo hire that guy, NVIDIA hire that guy. I still keep, I keep, uh, shilling for NVIDIA purely so that they can hire me. 
for something. I don't know. I'm still salty. I I, uh, I applied for like a graduate job and they declined me like 20 months later. The graduate job was only for like that summer break and it just <laughs> so I don't know. I I assume that was just the fun um a fun queuing of the graduate you know enrollment system that just <laughs> completely blanked out. I'm like oh gosh, we got to send the letter saying no. That's not a dig at NVIDIA, I feel like I got that at a lot of companies. But it was just, it's just like, I don't know, a lot of hiring firms, a lot, well not even firms, but like a lot of companies and the hiring processes, it's just like, man, they're, you know, they're wild. And they're big companies, so, you know, they've got so much demand, of, or so much supply of labor, it's like, man, they can be choosy. So, alright, where was the green side? It was to my right, wasn't it? Yeah, it's still back over there. Um... Yeah, so should I go through my two hours of? I made I made this comment last uh, last time on the um, the vod uh, tweet. Where I was just like, here I am condensing two hours of uh, video game conferences into two hours of stream. Um, totally didn't save on anything, but uh, I've got some notes, so we'll go through uh, them. So uh, the first stream that I watched was the Sonic Central stream. Sonic Central, I am so glad it was 10 minutes. Uh, not saying I don't like Sonic, but I really appreciate when these conferences are brief and they don't take too long. Unfortunately for Sonic, it was so brief that they delegated out quite a fair bit of things into other stuff, so... I'll run through everything. I spent two minutes on Sonic Origins. Um, Sonic Origins is, uh, I'm going to say it's the Christian Whitehead. Is that his name? Christian Whitehead? The guy who did the Sonic CD and Sonic Mania, a bunch of other, like, recent 2D Sonic things that are, you know, really well received. Everyone likes them. Um, I'm gonna see if I can condense that and then drag it over here so I don't... Uh, the 10 year anniversary... Oh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Okay, real talk, I have zero idea what Dragon's Dogma is. Like, I have legitimately never seen any gameplay, I have not followed people. I followed one guy who talks about it on Twitter, but like specifically talking about the announcement of Dragon's Dogma 2. So I actually am completely blind. Um, I am also completely like fairly blind on Dragon Age, which I know is another one and I don't want to mix up the two, but my mind keeps mixing up the two because I both got Dragon in the name. Um, so that that's one that people can yell at me for. Um, I haven't caught up to that one yet, so I will be trying to watch them, but Man, that's a spot. That is a spot. I have one idea. I have one idea. Am I over the... I, I was like, am I over the edge yet? <laughs> that is... I... Wait. Maybe I should have, like, gone up to the top there and then, like, walked over here. <laughs> I feel like that's probably not the way they wanted you to get it, but you can. You can get it that way. Sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, Sonic Origins, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, I, I'm gonna use the term Mega Drive this entire time now. I, I, I didn't even realize they only called it the Genesis outside, like, in the US. It was the Mega Drive everywhere else, so I'm gonna refer to it as the Mega Drive. Dragon's Armor, it's one of the best games around, one of those masterpieces with a lot of rough edges and same potential even more. And then they only made one game? Uh, say a mix of Dark Souls and Shadow of the Colossus. Ah! Okay. I feel like maybe that's that's probably why I never really heard about it too much, because Dark Souls is also another game that um, I had heard in Infamy, especially. Dark Souls got a lot of outside attention, but uh, I'd actually like not seen much of. Uh, the director is the one that makes Devil May Cry. Ah, that guy really likes his style, doesn't he? Yeah. Is it flashy like Devil May Cry is, or is it, well... Or is it, uh... uh slower and heavier. That's a, that's a star location right there. That one, this is... I remember that one. Probably because I'm halfway through, because we're at 180! 60 to go! Cough, cough. Um... Yeah, so... But yeah, no, Sonic Origins, um... It's, uh... 
Well, it's Sonic 1, 2, 3, Knuckles, and CD. All on... Is it CD? Did they put... I think they... Did they put CD? I think they did. Yeah. Um, all in one, uh, HD package. You can play in widescreen, you can play in 4x3, it's got added goodies. Um, oh boy, this is a... This is an angle and a half. Maybe you just go for it. Yeah, I think you just go for it. Um, way more grounded than DMC. That's, that's nice, a director can, you know, do two different styles and make it work. Because there's some directors where it's just like, you know, they, they got one tone, wacky or one tone, like, bizarre. Like, as much as I like Kojima, it's like, I don't know, a lot of those games do feel, um, like, Kojima. He's, he's got that kind of, like, tongue-in-cheek, um, profound, but, like, not taking it too seriously kind of style. I like it. Um... Have you ever impaled a dragon on 30 meter long ice spikes? 20 meter long, yes. 30 meter, not as much though. Uh, can you climb? Uh, you can climb on the big enemies like Cyclops or Hydra. Ah, climbing on big things is always cool. Um, also, Shadow of the Colossus is another game. I, I've heard a bunch about it, but I've actually... Oh, my, my knowledge of it is probably a bit dry. I think it's that era of PS2 games. I dropped out of like, or rather, I never really like... I played the PS2 when I was too young, I'll just say, so I, uh, I feel like I missed out on, like I got a lot of the, the licensed properties because that was the thing you did as a kid, you're like, I know what The Simpsons is, I don't know what, um, you know, Ratchet and Clank is, and then I miss out on Ratchet and Clank, and it's like, oh, okay, I've caught up to Ratchet and Clank, but I've not spent the effort catching up to the rest of it, so I gotta, I gotta definitely, um, you know, jump on my A game and catch up on that. Although, granted, I'm also trying to catch up on, uh, PS1's era games as well, so, um, catch up seems like a weird word, because here I was saying it was like, oh, this, you know, it's too much stuff and you gotta distill it down, but, yeah, so, anyway, Sonic Origins, it looks okay, it's actually out in, like, three days, um, so June 23rd, uh, so, probably by the time, uh, only saw it at Prince Houses. PS2. The PS2 was pretty good, and that is the worst place to ground pound. Uh, do you like that dodge? That was a pro dodge. Also, why was the... Wait, hold on. Why was the chain chomp coming down the road there? That was a bit odd. Maybe it's because I got rid of one of them, so the other one just decided to keep going. Interesting. Um, Alright, let's now for another uh, green star. I wonder if you can do a cheeky jump all the way down there. You might be able to. Okay. I'm listening now. I got no clue where this green star is. I... Do I? I... I don't know, man. Oh, this is scary. I think the green star is... I want to say it's like above. Oh, I'm hearing on my right. I'm hearing on my right. Alright. Marco. Polo. Polo. Okay, I'm not seeing it. Maybe it's underneath. Is it up or is it down? Oh, it's up. Okay. Ooh, but I gotta be I gotta be careful, because it's up, but it's up like past the launch side, yeah. One, two. Oh. Okay. One, two, three. You've gotta to fall to it. You've gotta fall, bro. Okay. This is the worst idea I've ever had. <laughs> I'm off! I'm gone! That's gotta be a better way than falling to it. Alright, fine, fine, you asked for it. Oh, they don't let you. They don't let you do it. 
What a shame. What a shame. I feel like I, I don't know if you'd make it. It seems like it's a little, little far away. But I'm sad that you die before you, like, get close. That'd be really sick. I remember, um... Oh, I always love, like, the kinds of games where it's just like, you can, you can sequence break it so far, so... Um... Well, I spent 10 minutes talking about Sonic Origins. It looks okay, it's coming out soon. Okay, next one. Sonic Speed Simulator, it's a Roblox game. I am amazed that they're making Roblox games. Officially licensed Roblox minigames, but cool, okay? It, get, it gets interest. It's like, you know, a company's making Flash games. It's just a thing you do, okay? Uh, Sonic Forces is adding an update where you can play as Super Shadow? I don't know who asked for this. That game is came out ages ago. Alternatively, it also could be an update for the, um... Mobile Sonic Dash. It could be that. Um, and I, I remember they showed a clip of playing as uh, Percival from Sonic and the Black Knight, who has blazed the cat the helmet. Oh, I have no idea the perspective on this. I, I've actually, like, hold on. I gotta stand here and then look up at it. Oh, and, and I'm too close. Even better. Okay, I'm looking up. Okay, it's a little bit- wait. Wait, if it's that way... Am I going nuts? Hold on, I want, I want to get rid of that guy. Okay, let's just ignore him. Am I going nuts, or is it just like... Oh, it is further. It is further. What? Well, in that case, it's like... A bit in this direction, isn't it? That's... That's a bit of a blind faith one. I don't know, man. I'm not gonna enjoy that one, so... Uh, next up, they showed off uh, Sonic Prime, a Netflix series. Series. They showed off 10 seconds of Shadow the Hedgehog. Okay, are you hooked? Me neither. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is on Blu-ray. I really like how um, they showed off that it's got special features and a little, like, short. I was gonna say an animated short, but it's already an animated kind of film, so... Okay. But, uh, you know, that's neat. It's like the, you know, the old age of DVDs. You buy a DVD for the exclusive features. And also because then you've got it on a digital platform, rather than VHS or Laserdisc or something. Or Betamax, if people use that. I don't, I don't know anyone personally who ever had Betamax. Um, and, and Laserdisc was way before my time, but I knew people who had them, so... Um... Green Star 1. Uh, but yeah, no, looks neat. Um, you can get G Fuel with Knuckles on it. There's a symphonic tour of Sonic music, uh, Sonic music again. I thought that was kind of weird, because a lot of Sonic music is, like, rock and roll. Like, yeah, there is music that you can do in a symphonic setting, but it's just like... <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, man, I just need to crush 40 a fair bit, so there's that. Um, then Fall Guys has a Sonic skin. They said there's Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, but the trailer footage had absolutely zero people playing as the tail skin, so, okay. Um, Fall Guys is gonna come up with a bit. Uh, then they showed off a prologue, uh, animation for Sonic Frontiers. Um, it was 10 seconds, I hope you're hooked, me neither. Um, again, it's like so brief, and then they said, Sonic Frontiers, we got some exclusive gameplay on IGN first, and I think I've already spoken about that. Um, yeah, I think I already spoke about that. Uh, looking very shocking. I'll just say that. Um, but, uh, the, uh, they didn't show anything off in the presentation. So that, and that was it. That's ten minutes. They, they did it. They, uh, once opened a video on a porn site and then suddenly Sonic boss music started playing. Why were you opening videos on a porn site? You gotta be wholesome, man. ChristianHookup.com, okay? You got you can only look up Paulson videos. Let's see, okay, I'm hearing the green star. It sounds like it's in that direction, but I don't see it. It's not below, is it? I'm just gonna pan the camera back now. <laughs> It does like the Oh the, the the draw distance is just a little too shy. Uh, it's definitely that one, but I'm not hearing that one. I'm hearing something a bit closer. That is not a ledge you can stand on, okay. Oh, it's behind the red balloon, I just sort of glow there. The 
glow. Sometimes even three times. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, no. So, 10 minute uh, presentation. It was okay. It was too quick. That was my problem. But, you know, I prefer too quick than too long. Um, although, I guess, like, it, it's also kind of interesting because, like, yeah, I, I guess, I don't know. They could have spent, like, twice as long. They could have chucked the. the broadcast in. I don't know what IGN, like, what dirt IGN has on Sega to force them to release the Sonic Frontiers trailer on, or gameplay on their site. I don't know, but that's okay. I understood the joke. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I'm going in. Speaking of... <laughs> oh, boy, that is the worst segue. Speaking of going to hell, the... Black Voices in Gaming Livestream. That is the worst segue I've ever done. I I'll preface this by going like... I I'm gonna just not comment on any social... ...things that are going on. I'm just gonna comment it on me as a clueless person... ...watching a presentation of video games. Um... I appreciate the idea of, you know, focusing a livestream on marginalized, like, you know, people who would be unlikely to make video games, making video games. I, I feel like I, I I shouldn't, like, generalize and say a racial thing, but, like, people who are from, like, you know, from poorer households, and it's like, oh, they never really grew up playing video games, but then they really liked video games recently, or people who, um, you know, have done incredible work in other places, and now it's just like, now they're jumping into video games. Like, there's that. Um, I, I am going to help, yeah. There's, it's, oh, it's such a sensitive topic, like, you can't, like, uh, it, it's, it's one where it's like, like, expressing, like, um, indifference feels like people take it too personally. Um, I'll just say, like, I'm Australian, like, we don't really get too many racial issues, and I understand like racial issues are a problem, but I also feel like, I don't know, sometimes I feel a little overstated, just from an external person. And I feel like, in gamings, uh, oh boy, I I'm really getting into the weeds of the social commentary here. Point is, is that this presentation was a podcast secretly disguised as a, uh, as an E3 broadcast. Um, I'll just say that. Um, it had two people, uh, one person called Destiny, and another person called, did I write down the other name? Adam? No. Adam is the first guy. Who is the guy? Derek. That was the other guy. Um, and, uh, they're talking about, uh, you know, uh, social issues, but then also kind of initiating the, the thing. They did mention a recent um, tragic event, so there's a bit of that. Um, it, there were a lot of... Okay, so the reason why I, I'm critical of it is not because of the, the topic, because the actual, like, quality of the presentation was fairly poor. They started off by not having the microphones working for a whole minute. Um, uh, not, not that Destiny. This is a Destiny with two E's. And she's female. And she has purple hair. Um... I... I don't really follow... I don't follow any gaming podcast, so I don't know anyone. Um, yeah, I know, I know. I was just like, oh, okay. De Destiny with the Y is certainly a social... Socio-political... Um... I guess he does Twitch more than YouTube. But he's a... Yeah, he, he's a... He's a topical person. I appreciate Destiny. The political guy. I don't agree with him a lot. And I especially feel like, man, you know, my boy Jontron has been done hard, but I'm also like, I mean, I don't know. You know, he's a, he's a guy who, you know, he goes for it. I don't really know much about him, though. I should probably watch him more before I start going, yeah, he goes for it. He's, he's, he goes, he does it. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they had technical issues all over the place. Um, yeah, people about integrity, but... I, I can think of worse, like, people. I know that's not really a, an argument, I guess. We're talking about someone who's like, debate me, debate me. You know, he, he's a left-leaning, debate me, debate me kind of guy, sure. Um, so I feel like it's like, oh, when, when people go like, oh, you know, there's worse people out there. That's not an argument. That's not a defense, rather. But it's definitely like, 
you know, I, I know of some people who I feel like, you know, I, I, I'm usually pretty mild when it comes to like grilling people too hard. Like, you know, I, I think everyone deserves to be grilled in some way. People don't really deserve to like lose their livelihoods over over that much. There's not too many things, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of people do try and go out for people's livelihoods. Um, so I don't know. But from what I've heard of Destiny, like the the guy, um, I don't think there's really like too much that's really objectionable from what I've heard. But maybe this galaxy is great. Silent Hitler. Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. If, you, if you're gonna pick on someone, I think there's a lot of, like... There you go. The worst part, of, or the weirdest part about this galaxy is that these green stars are gonna be all over the place. Or well, one of them's gonna be on the second star. Who knows? Um... So... Yeah, so... Okay, so, Black Forces and Gaming. So they introduced this first guy. He is called... Uh, and I wrote down the name Adam. And he's making a game called Protodroid Delta. What the game basically is, I really appreciate the... Uh, it is the most o Odyssey level in Galaxy 2. In fact, it's probably the only Odyssey style level in Galaxy 2. There's a couple of levels in Galaxy 1 that are kind of like it, but they don't feel like as... Um, as open. They're not like... I mean, even like Beach Ball Galaxy, it's like, yeah, you can go a couple of different ways, but it's very like clear which ones you have to do like obviously the first one you do it's like a swimming challenge and then another one is like oh you gotta go up the back or something like that um hey adam do you know the adam i don't know the adam uh so here's a question where's star number two that'll be fun uh but he's showing protodroid delta which is a mega man 3d platformer he's making an uh, possibly Unity, possibly Unreal, I can't tell these days. Um, there's a lot of engine improvements. I'm gonna say Unreal. I think he, he was talking about Unreal, he was talking about, like, Dragon Blueprints. Um, but he did say that, like, he's, you know, he's not been making games for too long. Um, and, uh, this game is got a humble publishing, uh, deal. So I'm like, oh, good on him. Um, as for the game itself, uh, he, he talked over, um, the, uh, Derek guy playing over it, and um, uh, he did like he really did seem like he knew his stuff. Um, and I know he like those things like uh, if you watch the thing, he he cites um, uh, Eager Raptor's sequelitis, going like, "Oh, Mega Man is jump and shoot game." Oh, that's not number two. Um, it's like, why don't I call him Jump and Shoot Man? Uh, but it's just like, yeah, no, there's a, there's an element of like, yeah, actually, like you're kind of right on that front. Um, oh boy, that's a, that's a star and a half. Let's see, I know you can do this, but I don't think this will get you all the way. Maybe I have this point towards it, but again, I'm not sure if it gets you all the way. That's really not going to get you all the way. Maybe you just jump off Yoshi. Alright, so let's line it up. I gotta, I gotta know I'm in the right spot. Oh boy, I hit the top of the camera. Okay. How do I do a jump just then? There you go. Oh! Because unfortunately, Yoshi is about to drown. Oh! Oh! Look at that! There's a gameplay mechanic! There's a gameplay mechanic where you can spin on Yoshi to get on him before he grounds. Okay. Unfortunately, my spin is just dry. So, alright. Once more, with feeling. Oh! I wish I could pan the camera out a little bit. So really well made, they took the original game and made it modern. Carries several weapons and you can switch around. Uh, oh, with Ghosts and Goblins. I've, I've played the original, I've never played any of the remakes, but I feel like, you know, there is some nice haves that definitely would be would be great with Ghosts and Goblins. So yeah, I should give it another go. Um, you can come down from the top, I... Oh, as in you go down through the, to the bottom part and you come out, yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, so yeah, Protodroid, uh, Delta, um, it did kind of look like, uh, 
blueprint stitching in Unreal. It, it didn't really feel like a finished game. It definitely looked like, you know, there was a lot of bits left. But he did say, oh, I'm just missing um, animations. And I was like, oh, like... I, I, I would like to see him through. Um, if there's one thing as well, like, to judge, I really, really liked how, you know, he's got a lock-on system, which makes so much sense. Um, because, uh, like, trying to do Mega Man, um, you know, with free aiming is just gonna be nearly impossible. Is this the second star, or is this still the first star? Yeah, yeah, you can see the green stars. Right where my cursor is. Right there. You can see it. So. Yeah. Alright, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's coming out soon, which I thought was like, oh, okay. Um, and, uh, one thing, he's got the camera fixated, like, it's at a fixed orbit around the player. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't bounce, like, if you play this game, it's like, you can walk to the right, you can walk to the left. The camera doesn't necessarily hard stay on your character, although it's pretty static in Mario Galaxy. Um, but... I'm like, that game, his game, Protodroid Delta, it really screams out to use a fixed camera angle and to really, like, simplify the platforming because it currently relies on you basically rotating the camera around, so that is not the star. That is not the star. Oh, it is the Oh, my boy. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. I think I gotta... Oh, I gotta use the cloud. Oh, but I gotta get the cloud over there. Okay, so I gotta get the cloud, and then... Okay, where was the cloud? Do I have to release the cloud from some... I have completely blank... No, the cloud's there. So I gotta get a lily pad, yeah. That is not the cloud. That is a turnip. I think I do remember having to swim through an underwater bit, so... But I forgot that that was like star number three, you know? Let's go down anyways, because they probably do want me to go down at some point. It's a cool little underwater bit though. Games with good swimming controls, like, no one really cares that the water levels. It used to be, like, such a taboo, you know, water levels, but I think it's just because no one, you know, well, not no one, because people did get it right, but there's a lot of games with, like, horrendous controls for swimming. So, uh, anyway, so Protodroid Delta, um, yeah, uh, a little on the... <laughs> Doesn't look amazing, but you know what, like, I, I appreciate the guy coming on and talking about it. And I really like his discussions about the game. I think that's the, the important part, so. Next up, uh, they spoke a lot about, um, a game called Ninja Man and the Six Gold Chains. Um, I don't know what to say about this one. I, it's a 2D pixely side scroller where you share the love as the guy says he's like ninjas give love and you pick up very uh boisterous women and you deliver them at the club and i'm like oh my goodness okay yeah like it it, it looks like a, a parody flash game that like adult swim would make what's on to try it and three were the only ones but on the water combat like it. ah I have three. I really should, like, I really should beat Montana 3. I've, I've just, like, I've, I've got it sitting on my shelf, the Wii U version, and I just never, I never got that crazy into it. I try, I got into four a little more, but still not enough. And I keep going, would I like a Monster Hunter game? I feel like someone's going to say, what about Monster Hunter Stories, which is not really a Monster Hunter game. It's Monster Hunter in name, but... To the Trump Works! For you was amazing. For you was amazing, though. Like, for, for you, I'm like, I'm blown away by how decent looking it is for a 3DS title. Although I also feel like maybe people always keep liking the newer ones. Like, as they keep improving it, people go, Man, how could I live without that, you know? Uh, so Trump works. Green Star 1. I wonder if I 
made it to this stream, I just realized. I'm at 187, that means I've picked up 25 stars. We're an hour 20 into the stream, which means... Yeah, I'm... I'm ahead of schedule. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm a little bit behind schedule. We'll make it better. By picking up this one. Oh. 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 Okay. At least this one's easy. It's right here. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Okay, here I go. That's a bit of a gutsy one, but... Might be in part because I had several friends playing as well, and always having fought by teams whenever I want. Oh, having co-op is great. Like, I feel like I... a lot of the games that I played a lot of... And not necessarily my favorite games, but a lot of games that I did play a lot of... You know, they ended up being multiplayer games. I played a lot of Team Fortress, I played a lot of Counter-Strike, I played a lot of Payday. Um, and it's just because I'm surrounded by a group of people who did play that game, play those games. Um, and there's some single-player games that I have sunk in, like, a fair bit of time into, but... Yeah, no, I, when you can do it with a multiplayer experience, it's like, you get it. You get that time. Um, I think the only one that I think I've legitimately spent so much time on, on its own, is, like, Guitar Hero for me. That one's mine. Um, I never really got into, like, too social Guitar Hero. Like, I never did, like, you know, trying to, like, do score chasing. Um... I think it's just because you can, you know, you can do rhythm games by yourself. Because you are mostly doing it for score chasing as well. All of them. I think people who play Osu, it's like, it's the same boat. It's like, you don't have to really, like, directly know anyone who plays Osu. You just have to, like, have the motivation to chase leaderboards. Um, so yeah. So, Ninja Man, uh, I, I'm not even, I don't really want to comment on it. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, the guy talking about it also tried to plug a t-shirt. And then I go to, like, the Steam... Like, not even the scene page, I got to find a YouTube trailer, and it's been a year since that trailer came out, and uh, some guy, after watching, you know, the, the same showcase that I watched, because it only was a few days old, said the, um, kind of the same comments that I'm feeling, so I'll just leave it at that, as an exercise for the viewer to, to watch, to, to find. I'm curious if the green star was on top of here. I should probably, like, observe. Uh, let's get out of the way. Can I not look up? Done. Oops. I do hear it though, so I was along the right, the right lines. Well, I hear it, but I don't see it, so... I know they're not going to let you blind faith jump it, so... What am I? Okay, yeah. Fan-made songs. Uh, try your hand at Solos 5. I do not want to play Solos 4 or 5. I... I... Like, I have played fan-made songs. I don't like pattern spamming songs. I never... I never did like pattern spamming. I always enjoyed playing Guitar Heroes for the music, for the idea of this is analogous to playing guitar. It's not really playing guitar, but it's... Oh, wait, was that... No, I can't see it. I guess that makes more sense now, now I can see that. Um, but I definitely did, I even, I've, I've got a few fan-made, or, uh, not fan-made, but like, songs I, I made, I charted out, and I was like, this is kind of neat. Um, so, uh, I find the music uh, of the pattern songs hardly interesting. Sometimes they are. I, I sometimes get a little disappointed though. Like, sometimes it's just like, you know, MIDI spam. And I, I have been guilty of doing MIDI spam, like, as a 11 year old with Sibelius, you know. That's a dangerous tool for kids who have no idea how to make, you know, balanced music. And, uh, well, yeah, like, I don't, I don't think Solace is a bad sounding, like, song. I feel like there's a bit of, uh, you know, like, so sometimes it's like I'm doing a pattern and I don't feel like, I don't hear it in the song. And I get taken out of it. Like, that, uh, that's the thing that I really like about, um, a well-crafted rhythm game. It's one where you feel very intertwined with the song. And so, yeah, the pattern was just take me out. Balance maps in the game? Yeah, same thing. It's like, you, you want something to feel not too gamey, but not too hyper-realistic that there's no practical way to really play it. Um, 
Spent so much time in the Age of Empires 2 and Age of Mythology at it. Ooh. Yeah, I... I feel like... I can't recall, like, the games I did play so much, um, custom content for. I remember I spent a lot of time in WarioWare DIY. Um... But I can't recall, like, any others that I did play so much custom content. I did- I just played so much of Guitar Hero custom content. So just, if you got a custom chart, then, you know, I played it. I did actually try and inspire, uh, unsuccessfully, I tried to inspire people to submit to me um, F0X custom tracks, and I realized I was not good at F0X, so I would complain that the tracks are not grippy, like there, there's too many like slip roads, and I feel like I probably angered a lot of people that way, so I proceeded to not talk about them too much. Um, massive battle slightly in your favor. Having the editor to like do that kind of stuff is really nice though. Like, a lot- a lot of games should really have these, like, you know, custom tools and editors- oh! Custom tools and editors just to let you, like, do- do that kind of stuff, because it's really fun to just, like, you know, be able to explore the engine and explore the mechanics like that. Well, that's the green star, it's over there on the right! That's a- that's a spot and a half. Um, so yeah, next game on the list, uh, five, oh, also when they quit the, the Ninja Man, uh, you could see his Windows 11. He did his best. He's had, he's got the black backdrop, or desktop, he's got no loose windows on the, on the desktop, or folders on the desktop. He's only got the thing open, although it did spoil all the next announcements, because all the EXEs were in there, but, yeah, I mean, sure, okay. Um, gives long chat. Yeah, exactly. Having having the custom content always helps. That's why um people play Bethesda RPGs a ton because it's not like it's not the most obscure thing to mod. I would know about modding Clone Hero. I can guarantee it's like you know if they put too many walls in the way, it's just not fun. So, um, but yeah. So next game, uh, Five Force Fighters. It's a fighting game. It's got a kind of neat like. Uh, cardboard cutout kind of look to it. Um, so 2D characters on a kind of 3D background. Um, the actual, it, it looked okay. Though you were able to probably do juggles. Um, I am struggling with the spring. How many levels at the spring? Is this the only one? I'm trying to recall. I can't remember any other levels in, in the game that had the spring. I've obviously not used the spring this stream so far. Um, but yeah, no, it looks okay. I don't know my fighting game so, so I'll just say, yeah, sure. Uh, the guy who was, um, you know, who made the game, his mic was just not having a fun time. I appreciate that the 2D is still kicked in, so you can't slip off this as well. That's nice. Um, oh yeah, way more Galaxy one. This game, it's like, it, it does, it rarely uses, um, the old power-ups, but it still does a little bit. I, I think the Ice File legitimately is used once. The Fire Flower does come up a couple of times. Like two or three levels, I think. And yeah, you had forgotten that it came up in the first game, so... Sorry, in, in this game. Give him your best. So was that all the Chomp Works? Man, okay. Well, uh, Bowser time. Did I say an hour? I think, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Man, okay, legit, time flies by when you're having fun, so... Okay, next game in the list, uh, Arbiter. This is a fighting beat-em-up game. The guy didn't have much, like, game play, but he did have a, you know, a character mechanic thing. Um, the guy who's making this game, he was an animator on the Rooster Teeth Ruby show. You're, if you know that one, then sure. I know it in passing, like, I've seen, like, Maybe a minute or two of it. So I kind of get the idea of like what it was. Um, but it makes sense. Seeing this and going, ah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Like, it's not just an inspiration. It's like, that is this guy's talent. Is making these like, fairly like, flowing animations for, well not flowing, but like, you know, they really click, these animations. Um, the guy does not have any real extra gameplay. Um, but I appreciate you know, that he's come on, he's showing off what he's got. Like, that's cool, so. Uh, also, the guy seems really neat. The, the guy is actually, like, he's got, like, a, a microphone set up. I feel like that's a, um, an important one that the other people didn't quite exactly have. Um, 
and uh, and he he knew how to kind of present himself a bit better. Like I feel like you know, if you're making a game, like you don't have to necessarily be the most presentable guy, but like he knew exactly like what to talk about. Um, and just like really inspire interest in that game, so I'd say, sure, okay. It's not there yet, but sure. Uh, then they waited a bit. Um, well, there's a lot of... S I just wrote down like other things that the stream went wrong, particularly uh, the, the Derek guy, his video uh, feeds froze twice. Um, they talked over each other a couple of times. They brought on a guy to talk about his podcast where he said he was making big influence in the industry or, or social change and then proceeded to never cite anything that he's like said like i i don't know i would have just liked a clip or something um i'm not saying like you know you need to prove your credentials but it's just like i feel like i don't want to hear a guy talk about how great his podcast is i would kind of like to you know have bits of the podcast to refer to just just that kind of stuff um oddly and i'll, I'll mention it now i watched the upload vr um, showcase, and it's all VR stuff, but I appreciate at the very beginning, they had, um, they were like, uh, how long are you planning to go for today? I just missed that, by the way. Um, uh, probably another half hour, but I do want to, I do want to get to, how about let's get to 205 or 206. I think that'll be a good point, because I need, I need the extra. I'm going to say I need the extra a little bit there. Um, Oh, 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 I'm, 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 I'm dancing, I'm dancing, okay, I'm good. So, that'll, that'll put me probably about, um, a bit of World 5. Not the entire day of World 5, but maybe more of World 5 than not World 5. Um, but yeah, no, at the beginning of the Upload VR, uh, showcase, during the countdown timer, they just showed clips from two people talking about uh, VR talking about metaverse, and they were, I think they were in the metaverse. They had the little metaverse characters kind of looking around, feeling a little weird out of place. Um, with the green size, you really need your fix. Oh, exactly, yeah. Okay. Hold on. You gotta do. Do that, and then do another wall. Or I guess I could just go off the one up block if I don't break the one up block. That's not a one up block, this is a question mark block, but that, that makes so much more sense. The green stars are great, though. You just oh, the dopamine against the stars. I mean, that's that's the great part about uh, Mario Odyssey. It's just constantly getting these moons over and over and over again, and not being taken out of the experience and not having to replay the same things again and again. Which is, I guess, one thing with like Mario 64 is that like that game takes longer than it probably should, um, purely because you have to traverse the same environments multiple times to get multiple stars. So, uh, so let's zoom out. That is Gold World 4, so three more worlds and 40 something more stars. Uh, hold on, like that. 48 more stars, so to the Space Storm Galaxy. Let's go for 205 or 206. I think that'll be a good amount. Hey, I got another half hour, so it's pretty okay. 50 more stars? Oh boy, 50 more. Uh, sorry, what? No, no, 48. There's 48 stars. What are you talking about? 242? Your keyboard must be working wrong. Look at that. Look at that green star right there. That is such a cheeky green star. Right there. What if I try jumping that just then? Alright. Uh, I've got I've got the idea, I don't know if I've got the execution. Do not have the execution. Let's, let's back out. Oh no! Okay. Oh, I gotta, I gotta dodge that part. No. What? So close. This was it. This, this one is a... Uh, I I know I can't cheese out the last two. Oh, as in I can't, I can't pretend they don't exist. I got the good music though, so... I, might, I think I just went, like, to the background. I think I went too far, like, forward. I'm having, I'm having a fun time getting these ones. Getting this one. 
Ah, oh, I'm going into space. Here I go, here I go, here I go. First try, first try. <laughs> there we go, so, um, yeah, lots of technical things in that presentation. And then they briefly glanced through five other games. We had Onsen Master, this is a game that's basically Dyna, no, it's uh, I'm gonna say it's like Dyna Dash. Some people say it's like Overcooked. Just in the middle, uh, you're in, uh, mythological Japan, giving people sauna baths, and then monsters come out, so there was a kappa. And that was all I noticed, but sure, okay. It was a minute long trailer. It's okay. Uh, Grid Force Master of the Goddess. It's like, do you remember, um, the Mega Man battle games? Like, the grid-based, uh, grid turn-based games? Well, just get rid of turn-based, it's real time now. Um, so there's that. That's coming out August 11th, that's got a, uh, release date, so sure. Um... Is this two green stars in the second star? Interesting. Uh, El Paso Elsewhere. Was El Paso, like, something else, like, another game? I can't recall. Um, it looks like a lo-fi Max Payne, um, game. It's, it's got the, it's got the, the rolling. It's, it's, it's Max Payne. They know. And that's, that's okay, but, uh... I'm not too sure it necessarily screams out to me on a mechanic standpoint, but sure, okay. I won't judge too hard. Um, BPM Boy. This one I actually looked at and I said this is actually kind of neat. It's a, it's a game where you play as a little ball and he bounces along to the beat and uh, he, um, you know, he collects music notes. It's a nice little, just little fun cutesy platformer. It looks kind of neat. Um, and I like how, uh, you know, he reacts to the music. He's like just bouncing a little bit. This is a cheeky spot. Can you run up here? Okay, you can run up here. It wasn't a green star for a moment, it was a clear star. And now it's a green star. That is a very nifty, ch like, shortcut. That's interesting. Um, so it looks cool. I also like how it does uh, little fisheye effects where, like, you're on a planet, but it's still, like, you know, it's so not curved enough that it probably doesn't matter in the gameplay. It's just like you can kind of see it tapping. It might be a fisheye effect. And then our last one is called Samurai Zero. It's like a sword slashing parkour game, except it's PvP, and there was a quick time event at the end, so okay. Um, so ultimately, that conference, it was also two hours. And uh, all of those, like, five games they announced at the end, that was five minutes. That was six minutes. It was, like, it was bizarre. They cut to it, like, after talking for so much that's why i felt like it was like a podcast i felt like they didn't have like a ton of content and then they oddly cut short their presentations and then like they themselves the host talks a bit too much i don't know i was very on the fence about it so ultimately eh. anyway next up because i gotta i gotta keep going okay next up i watch the upload vr showcase so there was that uh that one thing um lots of vr games i think i'm, I'm not gonna mention every single one of them because unfortunately vr is a bit niche. It's not my niche as well. Um, but I did appreciate that... Um, well, I guess there's a few things that I wasn't 100% aware of when watching this, and I haven't actually looked them up uh, yet, but uh, things like um, the Meta Quest 2 is out. I think the Quest is a standalone system, but that also means that games are for PC VR, which means Steam VR. I think that's kind of the de facto now. But they might be also for individual systems or individual headsets. But then, yeah, the standalone ones have their own storefronts. And so it's mostly, I think, the Meta Quest. But I think there might be one by Samsung. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, let's see, we've got hand tracking, but we've also got hand tracking in the camera on VR. Uh, but then also sometimes you might just have a controller. I'm not too sure which games support what, uh, unless the trailer specifically showed them, like, waving their hands in front of the face. Like, uh, there's one called, uh, Unplugged Air Guitar, which is already out, but they've got a, a Pantera DLC, and you can play Cowboys from Hell. They showed that in the trailer, so I was like, oh, cool. Um, and actually the idea of, like, you know, it's a Guitar Hero style game, but you play it with your hands in front of a camera feels, like, rather neat if it works well. 
I'm curious how well it works, but I'm, you know, I've just felt all the way. Cool. Um, but it looks okay, so sure. Uh, there were some other games uh, that looked okay. Um, there's a, oh boy, we're at that stage. I don't think I've changed my batteries all, um, all stream. All like Mario Galaxy 2 streaming time, but yeah. The battery is the bane of anyone who plays this game. Fun fact, I sent my Joy-Con to uh, Nintendo uh, in Victoria to get fixed because it is drifting so hard. Okay, wait, so I got wait, I gotta acknowledge my head. So that's the end of the level. Uh, that gr old green star just showed up. So where's the other green star? Yeah, there's that one. Where'd this pipe go? I don't think I ever, like, acknowledge. Okay, this pipe goes in here. Where's... Where's the green star? Um, there were some other ones, like, uh, sometimes I get very confused with VR games because I, like, feel like, should I, like, acknowledge the fact that this is a VR version of that? Okay, I'm hearing out my right ear, but I feel like that's also just the one that I saw. Like, if I right down here. I'm just gonna see it. Yeah, okay, so that's the one I got. And that was, that was Green Star 2, because I'm now- I killed myself, cool. Psh. I mean, I was just warping up higher, because I got- no, I didn't even go higher. <laughs> But yeah, the, there's VR versions of things that, like, I was like, oh yeah, like, I thought that came out, but no, this is a VR version of that. So there's a game called Nerf Ultimate Championship. There was Nerf Legends last year, if anyone remembers that. It was u very universally pained. But the whole point is that I got confused because I thought this was a game that already had come out, but sure. Pick it up so the sound doesn't distract you. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I hear it. I feel like I hear it here. But I don't know if I'm just hearing that one. And I don't know if I'm hearing this, like, the, the end of the level star. But it's definitely, like, I mean, it's after it, because it's Green Star 3. Okay, uh, where's the, where's the green star, bro? I've got one theory. No, it, actually, it's not a good theory. I was thinking, it's like, oh, is it a like, yeah, is it around the outside of the lava here? Because I was thinking, like, is this lava a bubble below the, the fold? There it is. There it is. I saw it. Oh, I had the idea. Alright, so. That was a fun skip, but, uh, no, yeah, the star was... What? Wait, hold on, why is that three? Down there. What? Excuse me. Hold on. Do you like Luigi? Like, what is going on there? You seen that? He completely loses his shading when I pan in and out. Um, yeah, also, uh, yeah, uh... Is one of these the rightmost one? The rightmost one is... What a spot! What a star! What the heck? Remember a South Park episode with the physics? I have... The only South Park I've seen, I watched the original film which lost the Pokemon in terms of, like, sales. It was very overshadowed. Okay, that one took its time. Let's keep going, though. Well, one, because I'm not there yet. Is he, he's giving me the battery indicator. He is really yelling at me on that one, so... Okay, in we go, and... Let's see, so there's three, five, eight, eleven... Thirteen. 
Should I do 13? Should I do all of these? Because I'm curious if I'm if I'm gonna take like forever on the last one. I think I'll do 11. I'll do 11 because I'm at 195 already, so I'll leave one of the two stars for later. Plus, I also, also I remember a few of the, well. There's one green star, but I know that there's another green star before that. Um, So I don't believe there's a green star on the spooky part here. Interesting. I always find it's weird, you know, when I do like multiple ghost levels, because it's. I guess it's not really. Um, there's not really a, you know, miniature galaxies in this game. Almost every galaxy is as large as another one. There's one of the green stars. That is fairly crafty green star to get to. Talk to Luigi. Oh yeah, I should. <laughs> uh, is that that's on the moon, isn't it? It's not actually like visible from here. And then yeah, one on the storybook later. Must get the music notes. Get those lives that I totally didn't need at the very beginning of the stream. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, other than that, I, there wasn't really a lot of other, like, VR titles that particularly screamed out to me. I can mention a few of the other ones, um... Let's see, we had... Oh, there was one called Final Fury. I love how it was, oh, it was dramatic. There was, like, this, um, was, was she blue-haired? A blue-haired woman, and she was running down purple ground something running towards the camera and she was there was this monologue about her like running away from her problems now she'll run towards him and all i'm thinking is that man you know she's got some impractically like high heeled boots going on man you shouldn't be running uh, like that hard in those heels just it, it just doesn't seem like you know comfy at all but then yeah she turns around and then starts punching the guy and that was it uh one of the games reminded me of Teleroboxer. I'm glad we're at the point where I'm citing Virtual Boy games as my, um, you know, what, what I feel like VR games are. Um, yeah, nothing really screamed out to me like, oh, this is something you can do in VR that you've never done in VR before. And I feel like it's like, man, VR's been, like, fairly mainstream for like six years now, and I'm still kind of not entirely solid. It feels in... Oh, can't believe it. I heal sexy. Yeah, uh, it's like bikini arm. Exactly. Exactly. I I have, like... It's weird. It's like, I don't think, like, you should be against, like, doing high heels or bikini armor. I just feel like, man, you know, like, I can't take it too seriously because, you know, it, it just feels impractical. It's like, um, what's the... I, I remember, um... I, I, I recall this because there's a new Jurassic Park film. And I remember I watched the first one with my mum. Like, we watched it in theatres. And she broke out laughing when the woman, like, took off her heels, like, halfway in the film. She had been doing all this running and only now did she take them off. And I'm like, they made it a point. Like, like you know, oh, you know, she's snapping the heels, she's turning them into flatties. And it's like, wow, like, yeah, like, the average person probably would have done that like ages ago. You would have seen the dinosaurs and gone, nah. I, I can I can buy more shoes later. I don't think the green star is after that, but if there is, then oh boy. This I don't think you can get that without Oh I had so much more momentum in that direction. That was crazy. Good thing I keep respawning back where I was. So Alright, there's that. Um, Cities VR. I thought it was a, like a, like, oh, it's a City Skyline ripoff, but it's actually by, uh, it's published by the same people, it's not developed by the same people, but it's published, so it's just like, oh, okay, um, sure. Um, that's one where it's like, I don't really get the VR aspect, because you might as well just play City Skylines. You can play City Skylines on the Switch. You, you, there's not much that, like, you can't play it on there. Um, oh, there was one they showed off called Heli Squad Covert Operations. They literally showed a helicopter, and then that was it. I, I, like, I don't know the specific helicopter. They just showed off a helicopter, so there's that. Um, 
But there were some neat ones. There was one called Into the Radius, uh, where they showed off um, effectively, I'm gonna say, like, uh, Wii U-styled... Okay, hold on. They showed, like, Wii U-styled uh, inventory management in, in while the game was still kind of going, and then uh, there was another one um, where they pulled out a map and had to use the map in real time. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's stuff that's been done before, but it's just kind of neat, like, seeing that execution, so that was cool. Um, there was a game called Virtuoso, which looked like you could make music, and I'm like, yeah, cool, sure. Uh, there was a game called Pathcraft, where you basically pop down little cardboard boxes, so a little cardboard dude walks over them. Cool, sure. Uh, there was a game called Stride, which has apparently, it's a parkour game that's already out, but they talked about a multiplayer update, and I'm like, that seems kind of neat, because especially multiplayer games, that was, that was star number two. Whoa. That's interesting. Because as well, you saw star number three, it was on the book at the end. Like after you get the star chips on the moon there. Alright. Talk to Luigi. Does he just guide you? Does he just show you exactly where you need to go? He does! I hope that the first star is not there. Hold on, I, I want to be able to look up. I don't think he can look up, so... But in that case, if that's star number two... Man, I wonder where star number one is. I'm hearing it loud and clear right here, though. But I'm not seeing it. So I've got the feeling it is directly above me. As in, it's on the way to the secret star. My my theory at the beginning is completely, completely thrown off, so... Alright, uh, what's another game? Um, they mentioned a game called Moss Book 2. They didn't even show a helicopter, there was just that. Um, kind of interesting presentation as well. I, j I just want to add, like, they, you know, they got their little fancy visuals going on. And I'm like, oh, you know, it, it kind of looks like uh, something you make in VR. You know, it's like a little hand painted. They, I, my, I had my controller. I had my knee in the way of the sensor bar, and then I was like, oh, I gotta move my knee. And then I just completely blanked on moving Luigi. Listen, I'm just getting the lives, bro. I'm just getting the lives. Don't knock it, okay? Um, but it looks, uh, yeah, it looks kind of neat. And then, yeah, at the end of the presentation, they actually showed off the person kind of painting the scene. Like, little, like, uh, brief glimpses into it. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's really neat. So, good on them for that. Um, ultimately, it was like a 27-minute presentation. It was actually, like, quite about the right length. It's pretty alright. Um, yeah, I'm unfortunately not reading out everything that they announced. Um, but there, there were a good number of titles in there. Um, so I'll definitely say, like, give that presentation a watch. Um, if you like VR, and if you don't care about VR, and you kind of want to just understand some VR things that are happening. Oh, oh my gosh, again, I panicked. I keep panicking in my head, so. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 um... What else? Uh, there, there's some other games that I thought were kind of Ragnarok Hellfest Raid DLC. I don't know, this game probably already exists. Ragnarok... Uh... It's a, uh, game where you drum to, uh, on a boat and you basically command... Well, it's a rhythm game, effectively. You're playing Drum Hero. Rock Band. Um... But in VR, so okay, so no physical drums, but sure. Uh, and then yeah, they showed off this DLC, and it's it, they were like, it's got uh, the Offspring and Dragon Force, and I noticed uh, Halloween in there. If anyone knows Halloween, um, so there's that. Uh, there's a game called um, Next Player Please, which is like one to switch. It is the game where you pass and play and do zany party game. Uh, related things where you share one singular Quest VR headset. Um, that was about it. Uh, I couldn't even glimpse what the game itself was. 
Uh, One's Alliance, you get to basically be Harry Potter and the 1900s, we are casting spells at each other kind of game. Sure, okay. It's in VR, so sure. Um, there was a game called We Are One, which is, I think, it's a, it's a puzzle game. It's a puzzle shooter, I'm going to describe it as, where I believe you probably time travel. So as in you record yourself doing some stuff and then you got to do it again with your recording, like, playing, while you then do more stuff based on that. Oh, what I jumped like that. Oh, okay, we're good. Alright, turbo. But I think the green star is this way, because it's just like, I'm hearing it. This is kind of interesting doing this as Luigi, because I don't remember doing it as Luigi. Oh, wait. No! I'm spending all my time on these stars, I swear. The worst part is that, like, star three, we know exactly where it is, but... Uh... What the Bat is probably the highlight of the presentation. This is by the same people as What the Golf. Uh, but What the Bat is basically, well, I mean, if you're gripping two VR controllers, you're gripping two... Like, imagine how I'm holding a Wii Remote Nunchuck right now, you know, I'm holding it around my hands. Well, they said, what if you're holding two bats, and let's just design scenarios around you holding two bats. Whether it's hitting balls off things, or baseball, sure. But then what if it's doing, you know, typical household tasks? But you're holding two bats. It's like, yeah, okay, I, I like the idea. Um, they effectively described it as WarriorWare VR. Um, I'm not too sure if it's exactly WarriorWare, but I like the idea of the short, zany um, bit of game. That's cool. Uh, and then, um, Among Us VR. I didn't even realize it's not out yet, but the trailer is neat. I mean, I know it's Among Us. You know exactly what it is. Okay. Hold on, we got it. Yeah. Yeah. Can't believe it. Uh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some other bits with the, the upload VR present. Wait. Hold on. Was it? Was it 26 minutes? I think it was 50 minutes. I think it was 40 minutes. It was 40 minutes. It was not 26 minutes. I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. I, I had it like cut off at like some point under here going like, oh, that's it. So, 10 more stars. Yeah, I know. 10 more stars and I'm taking my sweet time. I'll get the 10 stars. Don't worry. A bit like Octodad. Yeah, kind of like Octodad. I always wonder, like, if, if they do share people. Octodad is, um, it's an Australian-made game, isn't it? I think. Um, speaking of Australian-made game, I'm gonna glance to, oh, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, uh, to, uh, the Devolver Direct, which starts off with Cult of the Lamb, which is a game that's being funded by the Victorian government in Australia. Cult of the Lamb is, uh... If I had to describe it, I'd say Don't Starve, but I haven't played Don't Starve, so I don't know what exactly it is, but it definitely looks like it's paying a little bit more focus on combat, but it's still got that kind of base building aspect that I feel like Don't Starve is, but I've never played it, so I don't know. <laughs> don't Starve, I really do believe this is a survival game. I feel like this is more like a, like a Stardew Valley kind of, you know, combat farming mix. Oh no! Oh yes! Okay, first try. <laughs> So there was that. Um, looks okay, it's coming out soon in August 11. Um, Devolver's games I generally find to be like fairly above average, but I also feel like some of them don't quite stick with me. Um, this next one uh, called Angerfoot. Um, it's a first person shooter where they show you kicking a lot, but not exclusively kicking. Uh, the art style is a bit manic, but it doesn't really click with me. Um, I feel like I would like to see the kicking more in the gameplay, so whether that involves kicking, like, barrels towards enemies. It does look cool. I feel like I've seen too many first-person shooters to, like... Like, I would like to see more, because I think the trailer's a bit short. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a game called Card Shark, which came out already. It was out by the time they did the direct, or the, the showcase. So, when you look at it, it's like, okay, they show the main character playing various card games, but then also they're doing this jousting, there's like a bunch of people talking. It made me wonder, like, oh, what kind of game is this? And it's effectively, the card games are the puzzles 
and it's a very story-driven game. So imagine Professor Layden, but every contextual puzzle is the card game, and it's your goal to cheat the card game in order to succeed. And I'm like, that's kind of clever. That's kind of neat. But it's something that I don't know if you'd get from the trailer. I don't know if you'd really pick up on what the game actually was. Um, which is kind of interesting, so... Sure. Um, but people are liking it, and that's good. Um, next up we got the Plucky Squire. Uh, this one was actually fairly neat looking. It's like a little Zelda looking game. It's got the top down view and then it does a little side scrolling view like it's um, uh, Link's Awakening. You know, where it's got those like few bits where you go into a side scrolling mode. Um, like that kind of stuff. Nothing really too fancy, but sure, okay. But then, um, or I would say the art style is great because it's like you're in a little uh, kid's picture book. So it's like bright color, but it also like they get the shine of those picture books pretty nice um, on that. So that's cool. And then the plucky squire, he walks off the page into the real world. And suddenly I feel like, ooh, is this like a Mario Odyssey style game where, you know, you believe the game is like one set of mechanics. Because remember how they showed off Mario Odyssey and they gave a trailer and they were just like, it's just the Mario platformer in 3D. And they showed off a bunch of like neat mechanics. And then at like a later year's expo, they showed off the fact that you throw your hat and you take possession of things. And it's like, we went all that time without knowing that that was how the game would play. It's amazing. So, um, I really like this idea of constantly hopping in and out of different mediums. I hope that the game is fairly consistent in how it applies that. Because um, I worry that it's, it'd be very easy to, um, you know, well, to make the game... Oh! I don't think I've got it. No. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I hope the checkpoint wasn't all the way back at the poop. It was all the way back at the poop. Are you kidding me? I guess he can't die on the moon, but... Man, I'm getting very tired of doing this, like, platforming bit. I guess this is the last star of the galaxy, but jeez, I've spent enough time on this galaxy. I swear, so... One last game, and I think I mentioned already, Skate Story. Uh, one thing I noticed was the Devolver stream was content ID'd on the song, and therefore it was muted. Which loses the impact of the trailer so hard. But the game looks cool, it's like a little, um, it's a skating game, you play as a glass guy, you're kind of in, um, if I had to describe, like, neon, RG, not RGB, but like, just neon lit, like, hard edges, but black, like, kind of, typeface, body, uh, environments, um, very abstract looking, but very neat looking as well, and I kind of like the idea of, it's a skating platformer, that's just cool, so. Uh, the Devolver Conference, it was 25 minutes, um, and they basically showcased all of this in between, um, the actual presentation, which is a skit where they talked about the, um, the video game Singularity. I think the common, th or the, the thing for them to, to riff on this time was game developers buying every other game developer studio, um, Okay, there we go. We're done. We're done with this galaxy. It's all, go all gone. So, so they had the idea of, um, like, you know, Devolver being so big that they ended up, you know, kind of, uh, well, effectively creating the singularity and every, you know, company ended up being up one. Uh, the concept is neat. I feel like the execution was a little bit weak this time. The acting just didn't feel as over the top um, as it had been in the past. Um, I guess they didn't have a gag between the sections as much. It kind of was like, let's hit the same point section over and over again. Um, which I feel like, unfortunately, yeah, did lead to the presentation being a little weaker. Sure. Um, also, yeah, the, the trailers didn't feel like they took up as much of the presentation as maybe it could have. But I guess, like, I don't know, Devolver's probably always been like that. I'm just misremembering it, so, sure. Uh, I watched one last showcase, and that was the Epic Games Store. Summer Showcase. I feel like Epic, I am the one person who is very indifferent about the Epic Games Store. I have not spent a single dime on the Epic Games Store, and yet I look and I go, yeah, okay. I feel like it's, it's, it is doing more good to the industry than bad, as much as people will like yell about it. I'm like, yeah, I mean, there might be games that probably wouldn't have been published otherwise. Uh, and then they got like, you know, that epic money. Okay, it's not out in that direction. 
Now I'm a bit concerned. Where's the star that I'm hearing? Uh, but anyway, this presentation is mostly just Epic saying, here's all this cool stuff that we're publishing. Um, to some degree. Oh, wall jumping is overrated, and so is coming back down to Earth. Okay. And my better is low, I, I know. Oh. oh, I'm going down, I'm going up, I'm still going up, and I got it! Oh, first try. So, but yeah, um, yeah, most of these games are... I'm not too sure if all of these are Epic Games exclusives, but I definitely know a good number of them are. So, let's go through the list. Um, pretty short showcase, actually. It was like 20 minutes. Um, which I thought was like, yeah, great length. Uh, so first one, The Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. I looked in and I said, those are dwarves. And then I was like, they're killing the, was it the, the evil or something they called, the darkness, something like that in the trailer. And I was like, they look like orcs. And then they revealed it was Lord of the Rings. And I was like, yeah. I feel like I'm really in tune to this, but sure. What is it? Uh, platforming, mining, building, crafting. That's what I got out of the trailer. Um, probably co-op, for sure. Uh, next one, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. They showed about a minute and a half of them playing the... Um, I, I called it prop hunt, but it's also like Evolve style. So it's like one guy's the monster and multiple people are trying to capture the monster. Um, but uh, they showed off two little monsters. One uh, is the Slimer and one's the... I guess it's a brain guy. I don't know my Ghostbusters, but I also feel like... Is there even lore to Ghostbusters or is it just... It's the Slimer, like that's it. Uh, who knows? Um, they showed off that they had different mechanics and I was like, that's actually fairly neat. I appreciate the direction that they've, like, taken this. I feel like Ghostbusters works well in a video game format. Um, and some people might vouch for the... That one... What was it? 2009 video game? That did come to Epic uh, in a remake form, but I feel like it hasn't come to Steam yet, has it? It just kind of exists, it's just there. Oh boy, I shouldn't have gotten rid of that. That's okay, I don't need it! <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, PC Building Simulator 2. I thought the first one was very average. I feel like the presentation was not particularly amazing, and uh, my challenge was basically having to remember the parts on the email that I then had to immediately order afterwards. Building the PCs in the game is not hard at all, because you get like little checkboxes saying you've done every step, like you know that you've done the job right. Um, also there's bits that are kind of frustrating, like dusting, it's just like, oh okay, or, you know, having to peruse the, um, you know, get the camera in the right spot to trigger things in certain cases. It's not the most amazing game, but, you know, it served a nice, a nice game in the time of bad GPU prices. And again, they're, they're again, pretty good now. 6900 XT is incredibly cheap as a GPU, I've seen it for like 1200 bucks. No, twelve fifty, I think. Actually, yeah, no, I saw a twelve hundred dollar one. Australian. It's that's just an insane price. Absolutely crazy price. So, uh, I'm expecting the green star to be something you hear and not necessarily something you see. But we'll see where we go. Oh, it's a hot boy. Oh, look, it's a hot one. Okay, haven't heard it yet. Ah, oh, I thought I could get all the way to the end without jumping. It looks pretty impressive. Okay, so nothing on the first planet. I think... I think I am remembering this as one of the worst green stars ever. Am I recalling this one correctly? I remember pain when I did one of these green stars. Uh, that's the comment metal I'm hearing. Look at these fat chickens pooping bombs, so, okay. Uh, next, so PC Building Simulator 2, uh, I don't know really anything different about it. It kind of looks like the exact same game, but hopefully they don't charge crazy amounts for the DLC. Uh, yes, I do see that star right there. That is not the one I was thinking of. Uh, next one, Shoulders of Giants. You play as a frog on a big robot disc robot. Um, it looks okay. I can't really tell you too much about it. it oh, why did I do that? Ah, 
kicking myself. Too bad I don't have many lives left. Also, I gotta go through all this again. Ah! Man, that's happened quite a few times this uh, stream. Just dying and having to do very significant parts over and over again. Uh, but yeah. Uh, then they said Sifu. Was it Saifu? I think it was Sifu. There was an update. Um, those modifiers? Sure. Uh, there's a game called Chia? To Chia? Um, and uh, I feel like, did I see this game last year? Uh, it was like a, you're on a, um, I'm gonna say like a Polynesian area island, and uh, like they showed off that they've got different abilities. And it kind of reminded me of a, just, I'm gonna say Breath of the Wild in the sense of like, oh, you got a bunch of tools and you can use them all about. Uh, but they specifically showed off that you can possess things. You can possess a bird, then you can possess a fish and a turtle, and then you become a lamp, and you throw yourself at people, and you set things on fire, but then you can also just be yourself, and also pick up the lamp and throw things at people, and I thought that's kind of neat. Um, so that, that was kind of cool. Uh, the game's not coming out until early next year though, so okay. Uh, then they shut off a few games that just came on the Epic Games Store. I can't recall any of these apart from Total War Warhammer 3, which I mentioned last year. Sorry, last year? Uh, last week. Because the Warhammer trailer, or thing. And uh, Lego Star Wars, which I'm pretty sure everyone knows exists. So, you don't need me to tell you that. Um, they had Goat Sim 3. They gave a trailer, uh, just a CG trailer. It looks like Goat Sim. You could tell it was Goat Sim a mile away, sure. Uh, Splitgate is now coming to the Epic Games Store, which, um, Splitgate's one of those, like, first-person shooters that has, like, remained relevant. People still play it. Maybe it's a little underground, but, like, people still play it. People don't, like, dismiss it. Um, it's not like Lawbreakers. We'll just say that. <laughs> um, Disney Speedstorm. Uh, it's the Disney Kart Racer that they're making. Uh, it looks, the trailer looks okay. They showed off a track. Uh, where, um, you're in, like, a theater, and you drive up to the screen, and you get, uh, oh yeah, Goat Sim, I, yeah, also, yeah, when did Goat Sim 2 happen? I guess that was the, I wrote that down in my notes as well, I, I didn't mention it, but yeah, I just completely forgot, yeah, the, what, what Goat Sim 2? Maybe they're referring to one of the DLCs, basically, like, pretending that there was so much content in Goat Sim 1. That it's like a full sequel. It's just like the Stanley Parable. Spoilers, but you know what I mean. Well, that, that's spoilers for the new DLC, by the way. They, they're like, oh, it's the Stanley Parable 2 at some point in it. And now it's just like, you know, someone's gonna make a Stanley Parable 3, and it's like, oh, how do you mention it? How do, how do you name drop it now? Uh, but yeah, no, the Disney Speed Storm. It's a better looking trailer. I'm still on the fence because I'm not, like, I'm not too confident in Game Off's games. I don't know. Like, they make Asphalt. And Asphalt is, like, it's just been so low budget of a franchise, so I don't know. Um, next game is Giga Bash. You play as, what did I say? Play as a monster beating up other monsters. Or Monster, as I wrote in my notes. Um, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a Godzilla simulator game. Um, but it's a lot faster paced than I thought, and it's actually like a four-player, um, like smash em up kind of game. So I thought, oh, it's okay. Also, you're not exclusively in cities. Um, this one green star is actually the worst one. I remember this, like, one being here on the slope. So, there it is. There it is. It's actually the worst green star I know of entirely. It's just there. You just gotta, one no is there, and then you've got a shot in the dark. At least you get a checkpoint here. When do you see it? I can't even see it. You can't even see it coming. Ah. And you can't, you can't go back up, because you can't spin. It's just, oh, This is what I got all these lives for, I swear. So yeah, there's that, um, Raw Men Food Fighter Arena. This is a very bizarre game where you play as a bunch of soup servers, or one soup server. What was the game? I don't know. It's like, I think it's like a collect the flag, capture the flag kind of game. You become like a fleshy ball at some point of food at 
various points and then another point like everyone's got pots on their heads and they're running into each other it just happens um it was a very nice dodge yes it just happens it's a game that exists um one thing i noted i wrote down was uh the environment they were in looked very much like el dorado in overwatch and then i wrote not not the new one not the new overwatch because it's daytime in the new one um so there's that uh then they went back to back on the free to play games they said rocket league's got a new season and sure most of rocket league's new seasons are you know they, the content comes back they introduce so much stuff and then it just comes back in the next um season well not the next season but like you know, seasons down the line they're usually not introducing new modes like they're usually like they've got the same set of new modes that they run every like three years or, or every like three months so you don't miss out too much if you're not playing rocket league day one um so there's that uh fall guys is coming free to play pretty much tomorrow ah the epic game store yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Fall Guys is coming. They're doing the exact same thing as Rocket League, which is taking it off Steam and then being free to play on, on uh, Epic. Being the exact same game, I don't think it's really too much of a problem, although it's definitely a little bit like, man, I don't know why they're not just letting you play it on Steam. I assume just for the microtransactions, it's just like, oh, it's, you know, cheaper for them to do it all through their storefront. And I'm like, fair point. Fair call. Uh... You got a single game on it? I've got, like, all the freebies they've been giving. I've just never bought any of the games on it. I also don't th I think the only game I did play on uh, Epic was uh, Trackmania, whatever they... They just named the new one Trackmania, and then I got very sad about the monetization model on it, so... And I think I played, like, a Jackbox on it. Briefly. Just because they did give the... Uh, what about that? was... Might be a jackpot one. Someone I follow makes videos on games and that's a single taste. Like the Eternal Cylinder, I fell in love with the game, I got on the Epic Games Store so you could get it early. That's one thing, yeah. Like, that, that's the thing they're riding on to really, like, sell the Epic Games Store. It's just, you know, people want to play the games right away. I guess, like, yeah, they are, like, ready right away, but I feel like a lot of people can be patient. Um, but yeah, it depends on just, yeah, if you do want to play it right away. No, no harm to doing it. My ace team? True, ace team are great. Oh, oh. Ace team are great. Uh, and then, Fortnite, there's an invitational, which I thought was kind of weird, like an in-person event, but it's Fortnite. You gotta do 100 people all at once. How do you do an invitational event with 100 people? That's gotta be crazy, so. We'll see how it goes. Um, then they said, uh, a bunch of game. They mentioned a bunch of games that they themselves are publishing. Epic. So there was uh, Rumbleverse, which I think I noted last year as like it's the game where you punch people, and it looks like it's probably a battle royale, um, but you just slap people silly. And I thought, yep, that's, that's for sure. Okay. Oh, I did not. I did not line that one up uh, nicely. Uh, touch type tail. That is exactly as it sounds. Okay. So sure, okay. PC Building Sim 2, which has already shown up. Going Medieval, which looks like an early access building game, and actually early access, so I think they even mentioned that. And Alan Wake 2, which I think people forgot uh, was coming out again. Uh, also, I realized um, I realized uh, Donkey made his E3, almost E3 video, and now I'm like, man, I had a few things written down. Like, I had the, the idea of, like, um, I think I, oh, did I mention last week? Maybe I did. Oh, oh, I'm good. I'm safe. I think I mentioned it last week, like the creative business unit three. No, they did it twice. They did it twice. Can't believe it. Put another one in. Okay. Oh, pfft. that's how you do it. This is how you do it. All right. And then uh, a few last games. Rogue Company. It's a hero shooter published by Hi Res, which means it's a bound to be a free-to-play game, and uh, you also don't have all the heroes as a free-to-play person. You gotta buy them, which is now making me think: Is this like Dirty Bomb, where there's insane power creep? Maybe. 
Did they publish that high res? Was that them? Maybe, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't like scream out original to me, but you know, some people are gonna play it. Sure. Uh, Space Punks, which looks like top-down Borderlands. I'm actually gonna say that. I don't think it's got the loot system of Borderlands, but it's uh, my battery's low, cool. Um, but it's got that very. It's very similar in the art style. Oh, it hurts every time I pass it because I just went through the slide and I missed it. And then our last one, they showed off the Saints Row Boss Factory in a trailer, and in particular in, uh, or now, you can download the Boss Factory, which is, I assume, the character creator, and then, um, and then, uh, I assume you can just bring your character into the game later on. It's like Spore. Spore did the character creator as a free download, and then that came out before the game was done, so. Uh, but in the end, the epic... Uh, thing was 26 minutes, it showed off a bunch of stuff, the presentation was fairly slick. I actually really appreciate it as well, at some point in the conference they mentioned, like, hey, we're doing a sale, hey, there's a freebie, like, if you don't know what the Epic Games Store is about, here's what it is, like, there's a bit of that, and I actually really appreciated that, um, as part of the trailer, or as part of the conference, because I feel like there were some other ones that just assumed the platform, assumed the market so hard. Um, the Warhammer one was like, yeah, like, I don't know anything about Warhammer, and I guess you probably don't want to re-explain Warhammer, because it's a long story, but, on the other hand, I'm watching this and I got no clue what I'm really looking at at times. The VR stuff, again, I'm a little bit unfamiliar with the VR platforms. Um, maybe it's just not my place, but I really appreciate the Epic one. Doing it in a succinct way, and then on top of that, like, you know, the trailers were pretty slick just all throughout. Uh, not necessarily, like, the greatest trailers, but I definitely felt, hey, like, there weren't really any, like, crazy sleeper titles, or not sleeper, but, like, titles that you'd, like, go, oh, okay, they don't look amazing. Um, pretty much they just looked like, you know, a fairly ordinary game trailer showcase. And there's a lot of game trailer showcases that just, you know, <laughs> had very, like, suboptimal parts. So it's kind of weird just having one that just goes flawlessly. Um, and I know, I just said like, oh, I'm the one person who doesn't completely hate the Epic Games Store. And I feel like... It's in the volcano! Well, it's not in that direction. <laughs> I just got like, force pull pushed out, jeez. That was a pretty big jump, wasn't it? Jeez. Uh, but yeah, no. So, that was my, uh, my thoughts on that. Um, I'm probably gonna watch the Indie Live, because I feel like everyone talks about the, the bigger ones. Uh, and now that there's a Donkey video, um, I feel like I'm not too sure how much original stuff I can... Oh, I've got to... I've got to convert the thing. Because, yeah, no way am I getting close to that. I've got to hit that button all the way on the far side, and then come back. Alright, here we go, here we go, here we go. One. Two. Three. Okay, and then get this. Um, I feel like my thoughts on the, on the video game conferences is still the same. Uh... One! Yeah, this makes a lot more sense after freezing that, doesn't it? Uh, but... Yeah, my thoughts on the conferences, it's still about the same, like... I feel like the... There was still a lot of, like... Fluff. I guess I kind of went from two extremes. So I had the Sonic one, which was too quick. The Epic one, that was just right. The Black Forces in Gaming, which just felt like, oh. Um, and I don't mind the idea of like developers talking about their games, but I just feel like, you know, when there weren't developers talking about their games, which was a surprising amount of that conference, by the way, for that, that presentation. Um, legit, it was like, it was a two hour presentation, and I think there actually were people not talking about their games for one of those two hours. Well, it was just too much downtime. Uh, and the w weirdest part as well, is that it had, like, sponsorship by PlayStation and ID Xbox, and 
I even noticed, I, I started glancing at the Gorilla Collective um, presentation, uh, which was, I think, like the next one chronologically, and uh, it had one of the same hosts. And I was like, what? Like, what is this guy like? I, I mean, uh, I guess I understand, like, you know, maybe it is under the same, like, umbrella, but it's just like, the presentation just felt like so unfinished for that. It, it just blew my mind. I just don't know. Was I supposed to be looking at it? Is it for me? I don't know. Uh, I'm hearing it. I'm not seeing it. So I think it is. It's definitely to my right. I think it's just like dipped in the, in the lava. Like, oh. oh. Okay, it's not that close to the lava. Okay, it's getting further away. Oh, I'm, I'm going in again. Alright. Where is it? I'm hearing it. it's really close here, but I'm not seeing it. It's not like directly behind the right, is it? No. Why am I having trouble seeing it? I'm just gonna jump out. That's some weird gravity over there. Jeez. Okay, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. I'm really hearing it. Oh boy. I'm, I'm really hearing it. I am not seeing it. I'm going insane. I can't... I can't see it. I, it sounds louder... Like it's going quieter. It sounds louder here. But I, I still can't see it. I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, it's completely gone, and then that's where the coconuts are- Oh, maybe it's on the reverse side. I'm an idiot. Oh! I'm in the lava. So in that case, it'd be over on the... Oh, it'd still be on the right, wouldn't it? Oh. <laughs> I am. I, I'm getting sloppy, I swear. My ears are tricking me. I keep I keep imagining there's green stars everywhere. Oh boy, that that was a jump and a half. Oh test to that. Oh, and that was jumping two thirds and that was a jump in three quarters. I'm just not I'm not doing two whole jumps. <laughs> This is the part of the stream where I do poorly. The entire part. I really just do the exact same gutsy jump again. Man, I am I'm I'm dead, I'll tell you that. And I, I I've I've dared myself to still get the two remaining stars here, and that's it. That's all I'm going for. But, okay, don't crazy long jump. Just land on the next frogger platform. Land on the next frogger. Land on the next frogger. Now you can jump here. Okay? And you land on the next frogger. You land on the next frogger. Easy. This is easier when you don't just run. Well, there's the green star. I love, like, this lava wall. Like, I mean, I guess it's a wall right now, but... Oh! Oh! I'm just going for it. Nope! Nope, I touched the wall. I... Ah! Oh. Jeez. I think the bronze stars don't appear on the green star runs, do they? I've, this is just terrible gameplay. I've just... I've just lost everything. That's okay. If there's one thing I haven't lost... 
hits my battery, apparently. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Just, this is, what? Realize Blendo does the gutsy jumps too often. There you go, first try. Okay, one more star, and I shall call that a stream. And that's a lot of stars, but, you know, that puts me at a comfy spot because there are 34 <coughs> uh, stars left in the game, and my battery is still low. I will change my battery before the next stream. Don't worry. Hopefully I'll last the remaining part. It was on two bars when I started the stream. You, you all saw that. So. Okay, one more star in Shiverburn. Next stream you can finish the game. Exactly, yeah. So next stream will be the last stream of Super Mario Galaxy 2. I always, I found it was kind of interesting because, yeah, I, I purposefully held this off until after Easter. And then I got sick, so I skipped one week. So I started the first stream of this at the beginning of May. And next week will still be June. So I just, it's kind of interesting, like, being able to nail it just entirely. Uh... Oh, no, 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 I don't want to finish the world, because I feel like, uh, the last stream will be, like, too short. Like, yeah, it's, it's a little, it's a little off-putting, it's like, oh, there's, you know, five more stars. Um, I think there's only two more. Sorry, four more, actually. Because, uh, one of the, um, the other galaxy I left was, uh, two stars. So, I think there's only four, but still, I, I feel like I'm gonna be, um, uh, you know, blitzing through the other two worlds, and given that, you know, I've been doing two and a half worlds for two streams almost. Maybe not for two streams, but like, you know, I've, I've been doing, I've been doing a fair bit, so I'm not like too fussed about, uh, finishing up world five next stream. Alright, but what I am hoping is that I don't just fall into the abyss, the cloud apparently saved my life. Okay, so what I'm hoping is that the last green star is, was that it? That was it, okay. How on earth do you get that? Oh, do you get like a cloud, like, mushroom like later on and then you come back? Alright, let's, uh... There you go, that's exactly how you do that. No, you don't, you don't get a cloud mushroom, so how do you... By the way, yeah, you see... What is that effect? Does it do that on the Wii, or is that just dolphin? Being dolphin. That's an interesting... effect. That is the puddle that never leaves me, apparently. Oh. Okay. Do you just triple jump? Do you just go triple jump past the moon people? This one's gonna be a bit tricky to line up, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Bit out. That is significantly out of my reach. I have one idea. I have one idea, which is maintain the cloud. Yeah. That's... That's an interesting one. That is really interesting, yeah. Maintain the cloud. So get the cloud. Which, granted, I guess you, you can, you know... Turn the first planet into ice and then maintain the cloud, but that does mean then that you have to go through the next bit without spinning. You only need one cloud. It yeah, it feels like one. It's not like too far up, but it's further than you'd want. So, so use the cloud. There's a, there's a crouching spin, by the way. Pro strat. I love how far the long jump gets you. It's so nice. Okay, so you do this, then I've got to maintain the class. Well, I'm, I mean, yeah, I can lose the class like that, but... 
gonna be interesting having to like dodge all this. And then no spinning. <laughs> Let's not carelessly spin. That's kind of interesting because like this level is not like, you know, these guys are not a threat otherwise because, you know, you feel like you just jump past them, but suddenly now, the green star, one very particular green star has shown how much of a trouble these guys can be. Okay, I gotta do this. Steady spaghetti. No rushing. No, oh, panic, panic. My battery's low, panic. Okay, give me another platform. Here we go. No! I used one cloud. I'm sad. That's okay. That's okay. I'm double sad. I'm double sad. Come on. Maybe I shouldn't have hit the checkpoint. Ugh. Ugh. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Can't believe they make me do this. Oh, guys, watch out. There's a prankster comet. Nah, I, I don't mind my green stars. I could collect them for days. Literally. You get the feeling, though. Like... They package Super Luigi U. I, I mentioned this earlier, I just can't get over it. It's like, yeah, Super Luigi U feels like if this was a paid extra, if you know what I mean. Sorry, how do I phrase that? As in, as in like, Super Luigi U took the exact same assets and then charged like half price for a, a kind of experience like that. And then... You know, this is obviously, this is the bonus. You beat the game, here's your little bonus. You get 120 green sides you gotta pick up in the same levels. Um, I don't feel like they're particularly, you know, the levels are designed around getting the green stars necessarily. I think they just put them in kind of interesting spots. But, yeah, it's like, you know, in any other point of time, I don't know if it would have been, like, their day one. Even something like the, uh, the balloon hunt mode in the... Uh, not, not the... Any escape balloon hunt, but the the balloon time trial mode in Mario Odyssey is like, yeah, I mean, that's neat. It was also post-launch. Not to say it's a bad thing, but it's just like, you know, I guess these features just come up differently nowadays. Maybe I'll just jump it at this point. Okay, I've got three clouds. Let's not waste the clouds, because I've got to get past, like, Two bits of poop right here. Oh, so I could probably just do the back flip from there. Yeah, one seems fine. Two seemed comfy though. Well, there you go. That is too many uh, stars. That is 44 green stars. In a 2 hour 38, I did not do the 3 minutes per star thing. Is that 4 minutes per star? Quicker than 4 minutes, longer than 3 minutes. So, who knows. Also, let's deposit these star bits, because it'll be funny. Let's go to the toad. Hello, I can help you share your star bits with your other save files. I've added 5. Wow. Okay. Prepare to be rich. There you go, look at that, 28.98. I thought someone was after my star bit, so I started carrying a spear to look tough. It's so heavy. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so just to recap, uh... World 3, I had done Tall Trunk and Cloudy Court. I have done Haunty Holes, Freezy Flake, Rolling Masterpiece, Big Block, and Bowser Jr.'s Fierce and Fleet. Uh, all of these ones in World 4, Green Stars. And most of World 5, we've got two to go. Flick Glide and Bowser Jr.'s Boom Bunker. Uh, we've still got World 6 and World S with the elusive dot dot dot. Which we shall discover at the end of next stream. Oh, was it 5? No, it was 4. It was 4. There's only 4 here. So, 
Uh, but yeah, no, we will discover what is at the end of everything at the end of the next stream and on the way a few more green stars to get but uh, Yeah, no, that will be the last stream of Super Mario Galaxy 2. That'll be the end of the game So tune in especially for that, but until then I would like to thank you so very much for sticking with me because it is 11.09 p.m. Uh, if you enjoyed this stream uh, feel free to follow and that's about it. And subscribe on YouTube, because the VODs end up there, which you can watch if you missed any bit of this, and Twitch deletes the VOD, but if you're watching this on YouTube, then you probably are going, yeah, I'm already watching this on YouTube, please don't tell me that. That's okay, because you know what I can tell you? I've got an exclusive offer for you all. It's 3 p.m. Y'all, y'all England people, y'all England can't believe it. Uh... Jeez, yeah. Dude, England's getting like pretty good weather now. You got the Silverstone Grand, Grand Prix in two weeks. That's pretty exciting. So, that'll be good fun. I didn't even mention today's race. It was a bit nutty. It was a bit nutty. Ew, England. Oh, uh, you're not England. You're one of them Scots, aren't you? Aren't you, laddie? That's, that's very offensive. <laughs> they live in a bar, it's only 2 p.m. for them. Is it only 2 p.m.? Oh, jeez. Alright, have a good one, everyone. Stay safe. Eat your greens. Don't stay up too late, like I am, and, uh, happy solstice tomorrow, yeah, happy solstice. Have a good one, everyone.